and welcome to the very first episode of campaign three of speedrunners and dragons it's our most ambitious campaign to date look at these layouts look at this technology shit is nuts and i cursed in the first 30 seconds so youtube ad revenue down view count up uh, my name is Adef, and I'll be your dungeon master tonight. Campaign 3 airs live on Twitch.tv every other Monday night at 5 p.m. Eastern and will feature returning faces, thrilling action, and stunning twists. Have you come to expect anything less from Speedrunners and Dragons? Joining us for Campaign 3 are Kung Fu Fruit Cup, Patty, Blacktastic, Dangers, and Danny B. Hello, players. Hello. Hello, players. My God, a transition. Look at that transition. The Hello. webcams went like went like this. Hi. <laughs> oh, my God. How are you doing, everybody? Hello. Uh, Hello. Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, please, big shout out to... Uh, I've never tried to pronounce the username. Ogden Drucker, <laughs> Richard uh, in the chat. Uh, Richard has been working tirelessly on the tech and production value. And it's just sick. Uh, we love Richard so, in this house. yes, mm -hmm. we stand. We stand. This is a Richard standing house. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, big, big ups to Richard. Um, I had some ideas for what I wanted the layouts to look like. I made my own versions and they were terrible. And then I sent him the ideas and he made them and they were very good. Uh, so <laughs> that's the bottom line. Um, but gamers, are you ready to, to kick this off? Yes, my yes. character's nickname has an extra E on it. We ne I, I don't believe you ever spent a cell uh, sent me the spelling. I don't think I don't we think, I, I think we talked about it and I didn't We spell talked about it, out. it but we never <laughs> we never spelled it to each other. That's really funny. I assume the E at the end is the extra one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and not the first one. Correct. Okay, well we'll fix that. Okay. Uh, excellent. Right. Yeah, that's really funny that we never <laughs> actually typed it. Nope. Um, so I will start with the normal pieces of bookkeeping. All, obviously, you can see character names already, but that doesn't really spoil anything. Um, so I always start with some pieces of bookkeeping at the commencement of new Speedrunners and Dragons campaigns. These are pretty much the same. This is a home game. Uh, there are lots of home rules and a, a bazillion homebrewed mechanics. Uh, in this campaign, especially, classes, races, and abilities are heavily homebrewed uh if you are an armchair critic or a number cruncher i implore you to just sit back and enjoy the ride uh, yeah, shut up <laughs> <laughs> just the guide alone that i created to teach the players how to make a class in this campaign is 60 pages long so uh, this campaign is a doozy and some things might not work um also thank you for all the subs and everything in chat i greatly appreciate it um so i guess we're gonna we're gonna jump into the patented TM copyrighted ADEF lore dump. It's time. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the right song. I'm gonna find the right song. It's imperative. Okay. Did the song change, Richard? Did the song change when I clicked a new song? Okay. The brink. A mysterious energy seemingly intertwined with life force itself, latent within all living things. There are those sensitive to it and those able to control it. Before life, before time, there was the brink. On a distant world, a group of heroes risk their lives to save a world on the verge of destruction by defeating an evil infused manifestation of the entire planet's brink energy. A young girl's sacrifice ends the battle and saves the planet. The Brink energy disperses throughout the land as was originally intended, and the heroes' names go down in the annals of history. How does this tale relate to our own? How can events which took place a countless many light years away influence Earth? What those six in Lyceptia did, the pieces they set in motion, had resounding effects on the universe, as once dormant Brink energy was finally awoken. Only a select few on Lyceptia knew just how interconnected the histories and futures of these two planets were and are. Five strangers are about to find their futures intertwined and forever changed by the course of events which unfolded in a galaxy far beyond their reach. These five New Yorkers are about to discover that some of the passersby on the sidewalks and fellow commuters on the subways of the Big Apple may hold a great many secrets. 
Our story begins at the 68th Street High School's production of The Tempest. It has suddenly and unexpectedly begun pouring rain outside, as New York City oft loves to do. Students and families and friends of the performers now arrive at the theater, sprinting, their, their clothes drenched, scarce an umbrella is seen as no one predicted the sky to open up on the much-anticipated evening of this performance. 68th Street High School's theater department is a respected thing, and the shows are no joke. Performers are sometimes plucked straight from these productions and placed into Broadway shows by producers looking to scalp young talent. Also, my Spotify is just pausing whenever it so chooses, which is a lot of fun. So I'm going to go to the next song. That works. Excellent. Gamers, you've had the you've had the lore dump. It was so short. That's it. That's all the lore dump. There's no more to know. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, if you haven't seen Campaign 2, light Campaign 2 spoilers will be present throughout this campaign, as uh, as the Lord should make it clear, this is a continuation. Um, and I, I'm happy to have both people returning from Campaign 2 and from Campaign 1. We sort of have a little, a good mix. Um, but yes, so it is raining, pouring rain outside. Uh, and you are, uh, uh, let's, let's start with uh, Mamba and Chance. Uh, Mamba and Chance, uh, I would like you guys to sort of describe what your characters look like. Um, one thing I'll say to the players is don't worry about describing class. Uh, since the classes are so heavily homebrewed, I don't really want to bog down the audience with like, my class is this, that means nothing, because <laughs> it's just ADEF jargon. Uh, so just give a little description of, of what your character looks like and sort of, you know, what they're about. Uh, Bobby, why don't we start with you? Well, of course. Well, my name, well... The character's name is Mamba. He was a mercenary, escaped a top secret project that we'll get into, I'm sure, later in the campaign. But he's doing some jobs and he's on the run. He's six foot tall. Well, add about five inches to that. He's got a really nice black afro, styled in a little faux pompadour. That's right, you gotta bring the pomp. He also has had a rachromia with brown and steel gray eyes. As gray as his soul, or something like that. Some sleek, dark, casual clothes for some concealment of weapons for this job. And also the number one defying, defining trait. He is black. All right. The Reaver. The Reaver. <laughs> so good. Uh, Patrick, follow that. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Good lord. <clears throat> I'm Chance, and with any luck, you'll never see me. Ooh. Mm, that's the one clever thing I got. <laughs> I'm what in my 30s, short black hair, just very, I'm very white. <laughs> This is just Patrick's Tinder profile. I'm oh, white sure, in my sure. 30s. <laughs> what do you want to use to describe yourself? I didn't no, know no, you had this. Like... No, please, please. I, I, it is very good. Gold eyes with pointy facial features. Not too pointy, though. Nothing, you know, you're not going to poke your eye out by seeing my nose or anything. But, uh, I like a dark green trench coat. Not like a basement dweller one, but like a fancy almost feltish, dressy trench coat. And uh, I have gloves with a six die and a one die on the right and left hands, respectively. And I have gold eyes, literally gold. Like the iris Excellent. actual eyes, that would be creepy. I'm not that creepy. Just a <laughs> normal looking guy with a cool coat. He's still gloves. going. He's still going. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Chance and Mamba, uh, the two and of I'm you white. have arrived. Yeah, he's white, uh, if you didn't catch that. Uh, the two of you arrived uh, a little bit early um, because, you know, you've got this job uh, that you've been hired to do, the two of you. You don't really you know, know each other too well, but uh, you know that both of you have been hired for this job. Um, and we're going to go to the next song. Uh, excellent. So the theater that you're now inside of, um, it's got sort of like a dark 
uh, sort of carpeted, you know, like the hard carpet you'd find in like a movie theater. Um, it's like that kind of carpet throughout in the house, you know, the, 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 where you would sit in the theater and it's sort of tiered. It goes up, uh, to cram more people in cause it's New York city. So like, you know, real estate is valuable. Um, and, uh, it probably seats a hundred, um, it's pretty respected theater uh, and the walls are sort of a dark navy blue and sort of arch inwards towards the stage, which is a uh, it's not exactly a black box. You know, it's pretty substantial. It's got curtains and voms and everything. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you're you're inside and people are pouring in uh, just as the rain is starting to come down and you've you've just narrowly missed the rain. Uh, but the two of you are together. I take it you're a mamba. I assume your chance, her chance. That's right. Never say that to me again. But yes, we're Seems here for we our mark. Have a, uh, yeah, we have a we have a mark. We have a target. Yeah. So your uh, your target is um, sort of uh, he's in his late fifties. Um, he is a white guy, like six three, um, and you've been told that he has a very distinctive slick back gray. Uh, hair, uh, and he wears a very nice gold watch. Are we there before everyone? I forget if you said that. Um, you've arrived before the majority of the audience. You're definitely there like 20 minutes ahead of time when they would start. And, you know, you How sort of you got your ticket at the front desk for like, you know, five bucks or whatever um, and uh, uh, went in and you can sort of start looking around. There are some like water stations and like little cookies and stuff in the foyer as well. Uh, and various people sort of trickling in and out. Oh, Mamba, I've got the hands. We just got to get got to get me close. Right. We'll find some way. We'll find some vantage point to scan and sleuth just so we can see someone possibly with a gold watch. Uh, we're, are we playing with like Revolver Ocelot? <laughs> um, excellent. Middle uh, Gear. Um, uh, yeah, so there is, um, why don't both of you roll Perception? We'll do the first roll of the campaign. Great. Oh, baby. A 13. Oh no. Oh no. What is it? It's a one. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. oh, there's a cat. Kitty. Um All right, uh Mamba, you are able peering over, you see two guys that you think might match the description. Um and one of them is sort of talking to a woman about his age, uh and the other one is sitting in a seat in the back of like the front section. There's like a pass between in between mm. the like, you know, the like mezzanine and the uh, uh the the like stage section. So there's two separate sets of seats. And he's in the back row corner of the frontmost section of seats. Are there any other details that we can uh surmise? We can't really see anything on the wrist, no gold watch. Um, you can't see from where you are. Hmm. So I'm going to relay the, uh, the old information of my partner here. I uh, suggest we move a little bit closer, not a little, you know, be about be also, you know, not uh, conspicuous about it. Good eye. I'll take a seat behind him. Excellent. Uh, well, he's in the back row. So if you took a seat behind him, you'd be sitting oh, on the floor. I thought he was in the front. Sorry. Um, no. He's in the back of the front section of seats, like the front group of seats. Mamba, is there an open seat next to him? I can't, can't even I see. Haven't quite, can't even see. I haven't quite figured out where he is yet. <laughs> yeah, there are there are all the seats next to him are open. All right. What's your move? Uh, well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get some cookies while keeping an eye out. And go snag a seat next to him when there are more people around. So did we hear more um, about their conversation or was that was that pretty much it? Uh, the two people? Yeah. Oh, you I, I, are you next to them? Sorry, I was like, I'm juggling a few things at the moment. Um, had you gone up to them? No. Uh, yeah, you'd have to like approach them to be able to hear them. Uh, so are you are the two of you splitting like maybe Chance is going to sit next to the guy and you're going to eavesdrop on this couple? Mm hmm. OK. Sure. Um, so we'll we'll keep you two there for now. Um, 
So we're going to go now to uh, Lexi. Um, so Lexi, uh, your friend Lily is uh, performing in the show. And, you know, this is her first time trying out theater, but she seems really excited about it. Uh, and, you know, she excited enough to call you. She, she texted you and then called you and was like, she wanted you to come. So uh, uh, here you are. Um, you've also just narrowly missed the rain. Like it started to do that thing where like it starts coming. So you like pick up the speed a little bit, made it in just in time. And then it, I mean, it is pouring. Um, so, uh, you know, you're in the foyer and, and looking to, to buy a ticket. Yeah. I mean, or I actually, you were, you were told that there'd be one at will call for you. Okay. So I just need to walk. So I'm just in the lobby. Yeah, you're just in like the foyer, the lobby. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna walk up to the will call. Uh, hello. I'm here to pick up uh, a ticket. Uh, yeah, yes. I feel like uh, I feel like I should um introduce my character by the way. Didn't oh yeah, sorry. That? Please describe <laughs> your character to this decrepit person that you're I'll talking to. <laughs> hello, I'm Lexi. Um, full name doesn't matter right now, I guess. Uh, maybe it yeah. will. I might have to. No, no, but for right now, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, people call me Lexi. I um, am 13, and uh, and I'm just really kind of bored, so I don't know. I like working with like electronics, and um, today I'm wearing uh, a new dress. It's pink and it's got this big black bow and I have some um, sheer black tights with this cool pattern on it and like a nice pair of um, Oxfords. You know, it's just kind of like the casual whatever. Um, and then I, you know, bring my my normal stuff in my body bag. And uh, I guess like I'm here to see my friend. I mean, she calls me her friend. I think that's pretty cool, but I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so Lexi, this, this person uh, uh, in front of you is like, Yes. What's your name? Um, I'm Lexi. I'm not sure what name she would put it under, but uh, here, if you want to see like my little ID. What's your that. friend's name? Uh, her name's Lily. She's in the play. She's like, I wow. want to be part. I wish I was in the play. Okay. Yeah, I did theater too. Two theaters, tours in World Wars. Here I go. And then he uh, turns around okay. and walks up to like this, like, uh, uh, there's like so many will call tickets. Like every kid, you know, theater kids. They're yeah. like, well, all my <laughs> friends have to be there. Um, so, uh, you know, he's he's peering through and he finds uh, he finds one under Lily and he produces it and he says, I actually didn't know your name. I just like learning people's names. And then he passes you the ticket. Uh, OK, thanks. Uh, Bye. Um, okay. And uh, he he uh, you know, he's not a real person. He just like disappears when you walk away from it. <laughs> Oh, what happened to that guy? <laughs> no, uh, so he, you know, he goes back to doing his job and the next person goes in line. But uh, yeah, would you like to enter the theater? Uh, yeah. Or maybe I'm get not... a refreshment? Um, no, I'm kind of watching what I eat right now. I've been told just on my, it's not really like in my schedule, but I don't know, it's fine. I'm just gonna walk in and find my seat. Sure. Uh, so you walk into the theater and more and more people are sort of coming in now. Um, and uh, it's seemingly like it's gonna be a packed house. And uh, your seat is really prime. It's like middle of the front section. So like uh, a really nice vantage point for the whole stage. Okay. Um, and would you like to go talk to any figures or are you cool to just like take your seat and, and move forward? Uh, I'd rather not. Sure, uh, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I think that's a good, yes. Uh, excellent. So Lexi, Lexi takes her seat and is, you know, going way on her phone. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, why don't we switch to the, uh, why don't we switch to the five, uh, Richard? Um, our, our, our next character, uh, uh, Polly, it is pouring fucking rain. Um, you are late, uh, you're running late. Um, you got off, you, you're on the C, uh, you're on, well, actually you wouldn't take the C cause it's on, so it's 68th and like, what is that? Uh, Fifth Ave. So it's like bordering Central Park on the east side. Um, and uh, it's a super nice high school, like really nice, critically acclaimed, critically acclaimed. It's critically acclaimed. Um, 
and uh, both of your younger siblings uh, um, go here, the twins, um, and uh, you got off the train a stop early because uh, something happened on the train, like somebody got sick or something, and so they stopped the train. So you're going to be proper late. So you get out of the subway station and you are booking it. Uh, could you please describe what your character uh, looks like? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Pauly, Pauly Lasagna. Uh, I'm, I got short, thick, black hair. It's slicked back, a lot of hair gel. Uh, and well, the hair gel is kind of running down my face now. It's raining. I got a white, a wife beater on, gold chain, a little jacket right now, cause it's kind of cold in New York City. Uh, and uh, I'm fit. I got tight blue jeans, a belt with a big shiny buckle, and I'm sprinting. I gotta get there. I gotta see Frankie and Frankie. Yes. Uh... Polly Lasagna's younger siblings, Francis and Francine, both nicknamed Frankie. I was going to let him do that and not me. Um, yes, uh, so Polly, um, yeah, I mean, you make it there pretty fast. You know, uh, this man runs a sub five mile. Like, this dude is, like, fit and wears jeans all the time. Um, but uh, you, I mean, the rain is pouring down uh, and you make it into the foyer and uh, uh, you're just dripping. And so are tons of the other people that have just come in. Um, you know, people are holding jackets over their heads, uh, uh, etc. cetera. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, I guess I'm going to go talk to the guy at the counter. Sure. Uh, so you go up uh, and uh, what do you say? Hey, can I get a ticket, please? My, my, my little brother and sister go here. So are you are you at will call or are you at because I don't which one do you think you would have? Do you think they would do a will call ticket for you? Or do you think you'd have to buy one? I have no idea what that is. You, what will call is really? Yeah. Uh, will call is a thing where uh, you will um, somebody in the show, either tech or whatever, will like reserve a ticket for you or buy a ticket for you uh, and then put it uh, at, like aside and you just go up and say your name and your ID and they like give you your ticket. Um, I think you can also I think the Frankies would have would have definitely set aside a ticket because I've been excited to see them in the play for weeks now. Right. Uh, so you go up to will call, I guess. Uh, and the same uh, bag of bones is standing behind the counter. Um, and uh, he says, hello. Hey, what's up, Gramps? I'm Paulie Lasagna. You got a ticket for me? <laughs> what's what's your name? Paulie Lasagna. Oh. Uh. Excuse me, are you still oh. here? Are you with yeah. me, sir? I was just thinking about D-Day. Um, well, <laughs> Do you need me to come back there and get my own ticket? Who are your people? What are, what are your people's names? I served with you, someone <laughs> like you in Nam. <laughs> A whole group of Goombas. <laughs> Um, he asks, uh, wh who would have reserved your ticket? Uh, Frankie? Or, or maybe it was Frankie, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, he turns around and he looks through the tickets and he finds one, and then he walks back up to you and slides you a ticket, and he says, that's a good seat! Thank you. Yeah, yeah only the best for my family. Sure. All right, see you later. Goodbye. Forever. And then he just turns around and he's like, why did I say that? And then uh, he uh, he just like starts rummaging through tickets uh, and you're able to go. Uh, would you like a refreshment, uh, uh, Polly? Uh, yeah, what do they got? Uh, they got uh, your your basic uh, high school theater snacks. There's some uh, just some chocolate chip cookies sort of just like strewn about on a tray uh, and some water, like little bottles of water. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get a water and I'll do one of those. I'll do that thing where you take it back and you just crunch the bottle and it just all goes down in one gulp. Good. Yeah. yeah. And everyone around you is like, yeah. Um, uh, excellent. Um, and would you like to head into the theater? Yeah, I'm gonna find my seat. Great. Uh, so you your seat is in the way back, uh, in the corner. Um, like fully in the back of the like mezzanine section, <laughs> like uh, the worst seat. Like I'm, period. I am storming back to the to the ticket counter. Okay. This guy told me I had a good seat. Uh, and he he sees you again. He's like, oh, I guess I lied. You're here. Uh, yeah. You're gonna see me again until we get this seat sorted out. You told me I had a good seat. This seat, bulls. It's terrible. 
It is a seek, therefore it is good. Yeah, I didn't actually test the quality of the physical chair, sir. Oh, you, oh, you meant like to see the stage. Yeah, you know, like you do in a theater. Oh, I can't, you have to go to the ticket counter. I, this is, I can't. Are you not the ticket counter? I just got my <sighs> ticket from you. This is a counter. My grandson graduated so long ago. I just, I could work this one thing. We'll call it's different, I think. You know, whatever. It's fine. I'll just, I'll sit in the back. I'm going to yell for Frankie from all the way back there. If I could sit in the front, then I could whisper to them and they would know that I'm there. But now I got to yell. All right. I'm storming off. Okay. You could go to the actual ticket counter if you wanted to. No, um, I'm already late. I'm already late. All right, great. There. Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> Excellent. Um, we'll cut back to Mamba and uh, Chance. Um, so Mamba, uh, you're now sort of near this couple that is uh, looking for their seats um, and you overhear their conversation. Um, are you trying to be stealthy about this or are you like nonchalantly standing near them? I'm trying to be stealthy. So you said there were like some like refreshments uh, that, that were like in there to like take before uh, we sit down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna ha grab like a glass of, you know, like water and like some like napkins, right? Sure. Um, now, oh, now, you, now, now you said before that, uh, you know, one of the two people talking were like potentially like one of our targets, right? So yeah, the man. Okay. So, uh, so as I like try to like veer a bit, you know, side a little bit closer to them, do I hear anything like of note that, that he might be, you know, that he might impart of, of some knowledge or, you know, real quick? Um, he says, uh, he says, well, I just feel like 68th Street's theater department has been declining in recent years. I mean, God, uh, when I was here, what was that? 82? <laughs> we did a production of Midsummer Night's Dream, and oh my God, our Oberyn, I mean, oh my God, it was just amazing. And the woman is like, yeah, yeah, just like saying yes to everything he says. Um, and he goes, I just don't think they're gonna be, I don't think I'm gonna be wowed. Living next to 68th Street's always been such a pleasure, but you know, maybe I'll stop coming. So like in the middle of that conversation, like as you like babbling on, like I wanna like walk a little bit like toward like the couple. I wanna like try to like trip over my own foot. Mm -hmm. and, I and I'm gonna like accidentally splash this cup of water on this guy. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you, you, you spill the water on him and he goes, uh, he goes, fuck. And then he's like, he's like, how dare you? This, this is a Versace suit. Versace. And then you'll um, see me go like, oh my God, holy shit, I am so sorry. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm reaching up for these napkins and I'm trying to like pat around him, trying to find like, a, you know, something to, uh, I'm good. To uh, roll, from him. So do I roll have a sleight of hand. That? Yeah, roll Thank sleight you. of hand. Oh, 14. Okay. Um, you feel a wallet and you're able to lift it out his back pocket. Okay. Um, so, so like how I do that is uh, like I, I try to like direct his attention to like his front like coat pockets and all that. Like, oh, are you okay? Did you drop anything? Right. So like I'm able to successfully lift out, you know, from his back pocket. And he's like, um, no, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. That's fine. And he like swats you away. So, so as he's swatting, do I see anything on his wrists? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, oh, well, no, I'm t terribly sorry. Oh, I hope you have a really, really great rest of the show. And I'm just gonna like, you know, scurry on back with the rest of the napkins. Uh, do you still have his wallet? I do. Okay. Uh, he says, yes, well, I hope it's good. Um, and then this woman just keeps going, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we're gonna, she has literally didn't even react to the water. She was just like, oh no. Um, so we'll cut to you, Chance. Uh, yeah, the water spill is a Speedrunners and Dragons classic. That's the classic S and D you need to lift an object off someone. Um, so we will go to Chance. Chance, you're sitting next to this guy. Um, uh, did you sit like right next to him? He's sitting alone. Uh, yes. I sat right uh, next to him. He's in the corner. So you sat like, boom, like just yeah. to the left of him. Uh, and yep. he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, oh, sorry. Can I help you? No, oh, this is just my seat. This is where, this is where I'm sitting. So I got to kick it. This is where I'm sitting. How are you? Um, I'm uh, good. Um, uh, 
do you know anyone in the show? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I don't know, all sorts of people in the show. I got two nephews and another nephew, so like, I think three. And then I, I, I got a, a niece in there too. I have lots of siblings. I don't have kids, do you have kids? Uh, no, I, I don't have children. No, all three of your nephews got into the show. It's quite competitive. Yeah, three, and a niece. Niece, too. Wow. Yeah, there's real good acting talented. shops in my family. Very talented. Yeah. Very talented family. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, can you roll uh, Can you roll perception for me, Patrick? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that would be... Okay. And then what is my... I'm slow at this because I don't do this often. Hey, it's been a One while. One moment. Yeah. It's been a while. Oh, uh, that would be a 10. Uh, I mean, it's not hard to see you right next to him. Uh, there's a golden watch that slips down his wrist into his uh, uh, sort of like he's not wearing. He's wearing like a sports coat um, and it slips down uh, beneath the sleeve. OK. Um, does he seem annoyed with me? Yes. Or is he just uh, he's kind of actually he's uh, yeah, annoyed's not really the right word. I think he's nervous, nervous. Hey, man, why is why is you look a little, look a little nervous? What's going on? Is, he, is someone you know in the play? Do you, do you want to, is that why you just want him to zoo? Well, I bet they're going to be great. Uh, he says, uh, no, uh, uh, I'm uh, I just have some deadlines at work. Um, uh, and I'm 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 here because uh, well, I, I don't really like to say, but um, I'm scouting young talent uh, and uh, oh. my my last few contenders uh, haven't really pulled through for the agency. So, oh, that's um, no good. Well, you, yeah, I got to I'm going to point out with my um, my nephews and my niece. I'm, my name is Billy, by the way. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Carl. It's nice to meet you. And I and he sort of my gingerly hand? shakes your hand. Do, do I, is it the, the watch hand? Uh, no, it's the other hand. It's the other hand. Okay. Okay. Yes. Damn. Damn. Uh, by the way, you're trying to lift the uh, the ID card, remember? Oh, yes, true. But I want to. I want the fair. watch too. Fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> um. Very well. Okay. So, I uh, snagged like a dozen cookies okay. from the counter, and I have them inside my trench coat, and. <laughs> I, uh, I ask him while showing him the cookies. Hey, do you want a cookie, by the way? He goes, oh, no. Oh, it's so good. It just had here. Here, try one. Try one. And I kind of like shove it like towards his and face. He's like, he's like, uh, 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 and his eyes are and closed I'll, and he's, he's lifting his nose up. I drop it. Kind of crunch it and drop it into his lap. And he goes, kind of go, oh, shit. <laughs> and he goes, and, uh, oh, and, and I start, start reaching, I start reaching like, no, down no, no. And to, he, uh, to get the cookie crumbs and try yeah, and no, clean them. No, he does not want you anywhere near this space. Um, Can I he... feel around? <laughs> while all of this commotion is happening yeah, to yeah, see yeah. if I can find. You can see a full imprint of a wallet in his left pocket. Can I go for it or is? Yeah, roll sleight of hand, sure. Uh, 10. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you reach for the wallet and he thinks you're just grabbing for his crotch, but you're able mm -hmm. to snag it, but you're going to have to mask somehow that you've lifted it. Cause if he's going to look in a second, um, so you'll need, you, you sense that you're going to need some kind of diversion cause you can lift it, but he knows something has happened. He's just not sure what. Oh, okay. Um, Hmm. A diversion. Let's see. Can I like fall on him? Sure. Because he's still in his chair. Yeah. Okay. I because I I am clearly acting blasted. Right. So I feel like it's not too out of character. Oh oh sure. it's nah. And just completely fall yeah. in his lap and kind of roll off the chair a little bit and kind of like holding on to the, the he, seats around me. He stands up and first says guards as if like there are like the, people for that but then he's like oh wrong place um, no, no, even, <laughs> and then i start i start grabbing at his clothes like beg no no don't make don't make me leave please my nephews i swear <laughs> so good they're so please i'm just like pulling on his shirt just he's like oh, oh, him not to he, kick me out. 
Yeah, Mamba, what's up? Am I, am I around the vicinity to where I can like act like, like, act like, not not like security, but like trying to, so I'm trying to yeah, be like yeah, a good yeah. Samaritan and trying to like sure. get him off. Yeah, you do so. You're able to do so in chance, obviously. Oh, no, please, my niece, I swear, she's so good. She's Billy, got an important Billy. role. She's Billy, holding up you, the tree you, branches you in the Billy. back. Please. You are, you um, you, the two of you, uh, 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 Maba, you're able to pull uh, Billy uh, aside and presumably out into the foyer. Um, and uh, the guy's none the wiser. Mission accomplished. And problem. no problems. <laughs> <laughs> Only had to fondle this guy twice. He's got a little um, cookie crumb on him too. He's got a snack for later. It's not a, net, it's not a net loss for him. Take a little, leave a little. Um, excellent. Uh, well, we'll say that, you know, the ID card you're looking for is in there uh, and you both snagged an extra 50 bucks cash as well. Um, uh, but presumably you don't need his driver's license or his credit card. Well, um, but that's up to you. What? Oh, your uh, wallet. Uh, yours has yours has a hundred bucks cash in it as well. Um, but when you open it, it unfurls a ton of pictures in black and white of him on the stage when he was in high school. Like oh. tons. It just keeps unfurling. Oh shit! I'm right here. I'll gather that up. I'll pocket Mom, the cash. Do you want a cookie? No. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so we'll say that uh, we'll, we'll we'll skip ahead a little bit, um, uh, and a lot of you uh, are in the theater now. Um, and as you take your seats, uh, also, Polly, I I don't know. Do you want to talk to anyone? You <laughs> you seem kind of pissed about PO'd about the chair. Yeah. Is I mean, is there anyone sitting next to me? Uh, yeah. There's a really nice family uh, sitting just to your left. Uh, seems like a young family, a couple of kids, uh, and a mom and dad. It's Polly. Still got this up. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'm I'm to so self-absorbed in my own family that I'm gonna be like, yo, do you guys know Frankie and Frankie, the twins in the show? Oh yeah, Richard, can we swap to uh, to five or two? Six. What'd you say? Sorry, Danny. Oh, I asked them if they know Frankie and Frankie. Um, the the mother who's right next to you goes, I'm I'm sorry, what was that? My my little brother and sister, Frankie and Frankie, they're in the show. Do you know them? They're gonna be the best ones there. I promise you. Oh, um, oh, uh, uh my 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 daughter's name uh, is is Samantha. Um, uh, this is their older sister. I I don't know. They might. I've we don't have too many. I don't know. That's okay. I'll cheer for Samantha as well. Okay. I don't think that's necessary. It's it's a Shakespeare. You. I don't think there's really a lot of cheering. Oh. Well, what kind of play has no cheering? I think most, I think most plays, though sometimes in Broadway shows, if a, if a well-known actor comes on stage, the audience, you know, uh, applauds for them, which well, I've always thought was kind of weird. Um, is Samantha uh, that, not that's, well known? That's me talking, I've always thought that was stupid, but you know, whatever. Frankie and Frankie are well known. Samantha's gotta be well known. Everybody's gotta cheer for them. Otherwise, how do they know they're not doing a good job? I, you seem like a very nice man. I'm, I'm sure your siblings are very happy to have you as a brother. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to hey. uh, talk to my husband now, okay? All right. Yeah, sure. Honey, please say something. <laughs> uh, and he leans over and he goes, you should cheer for my daughter. <laughs> oh, I was planning on it, sir. Uh, uh, good. And they I'm get into a little kerfuffle. Uh, uh, Michael, so nice to meet you. Yeah, you uh, too, Michael. And uh, Michael's clearly uh, negging his wife here. Um, and she's like, she's like, stop it, stop it. Not in front of the kids. And they're like, Bob, dad. Uh, and this is getting too dark, so we're gonna move on. Um, excellent. Uh, so the lights uh, start to go down slowly in the house and uh, the house quiets. Uh, you can hear the slight pitter pattering of rain outside, but not, not, not too much uh, because, uh, you know, it's well insulated. Um, and it is quickly drowned out by the sound effects of a mighty storm coming from the stage's sound system. Uh, what would be a good song for this, do I think? Not this one, I'll tell you that. Let's do... Nope, that's too, that's too techno. The sky is about to open up in this real works. New York here too. 
oh yeah huge thunderstorm warning in new york city right now yeah uh, um hail okay. and tornado maybe really yeah so if i drop wow. off you know why <laughs> tornado got him hey. tornado got him um also, I don't know if uh, you're not from the Midwest, but uh, tornadoes, uh, you should go to the basement of your building if there is one. Don't take the elevator. Uh, if you can't get to the basement, uh, go to the room in your apartment with no windows. Now you know. Um, excellent. Uh, so, uh, it is quickly drowned out by the sound effects of a mighty storm coming from the stage's sound system. A flash of light quickly jolts across the stage from the lighting racks above, and a thunder sound effect booms as the curtains open. You can see a mast as the centerpiece of the set, rising well above the stage into the rafters. Lexi, your friend Lily is on stage already, wearing captain's clothing. Uh, she appears to be acting, to be weathering the storm, hanging on to the mast for dear life, holding uh, holding tight to it and barking orders at offstage sailors eager to keep the ship afloat. And uh, Polly, your younger brother Francis, enters uh, stage left wearing a deck officer's uniform. Oh, you're you're muted. I don't know if you wanted to be. Yeah, Frankie. The whole theater turns around. <laughs> All ninety nine other patrons are like. Uh, Frankie doesn't bat an eye. This is par for the course. Um, and it's, you know, they're professionals. Uh, so, excellent. Uh, uh, Lily's character says, uh, uh, Bosun. And uh, Bosun, Fran uh, Francis's character, or Francine, I think I said. Francis, one of them. Frankie says, uh, here, Master, what cheer? Uh, good, speak to the Mariners. Fall through it yearly, or we run ourselves aground. Bestir, bestir. And uh, the thunder and rain gets heavier, and the ship, you know, uh, almost shakes. Um, and Lily exits running, uh, and a group of sailors enter from stairs built into the stage just behind the mast. Polly, your younger sister Francine, is among them. I, I no cheer? Yell out, no, I yell out for her as well. <laughs> uh, no one turns this time, um, but the wife is like... I, uh, I, and I, husband... I whisper to her... Let me know when Samantha comes on stage, and I'll do one for her, too. Uh, the husband leans forward, and she goes, she's in that group. <laughs> I, I, I know when she's going to come on now. She's on right now. She just came oh, on. all right. Yeah, I, I give a cheer for Samantha also. Samantha is like... <laughs> a stranger has just called her name. Um, excellent. Uh, and uh, Frankie's character, the guy, I think, says... Uh, Hey, my hearts, cheerly, cheerly, my hearts. Yar, yar, take to the, take in the topsail, tend to the master's whistle, blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Uh, and uh, Samantha says, uh, good bosun, have care. What's, th where's the master? Play the men. And uh, finally, Frankie says, I pray now, keep below. And lightning flashes and fills the air. And in that split moment after lightning strikes nearby, you never know just what's happened, right? It's sort of that like, when lightning strikes right near you, you know what I mean? And there's like that moment of confusion where you're like, what just happened? And you, in this case, was that the stage lights? Thunder bellows all around you. No, wait, that was outside. And suddenly, the four of you look around and there's no one else in the theater anymore. Except Hello? the four of us. Hello? people on stage? No one is there. All the people on stage, theater are gone, except for the four of you in your various seats. I in seats. I jolt up out of my seat, and I I look around and I'm like, "Where did Frankie go?" <laughs> Which one <laughs> calls a distant voice? <laughs> no. Um, uh, so I guess uh, 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 Mamba and um, Chance, you would have been out in the foyer. Yeah. Um, and everyone is gone there too. The old man gone, the ticket people gone, the custodians, like everybody's gone. Is it, um, is it something bag... I said? Is it the Wait, cookies? They didn't, they didn't bag check, right? I assume no. they did not really bag check, but okay. No. I'm gonna be very wary. And then um, I didn't mention that my bag was pretty bulky at the time, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just lift out my little buddy from the bag. Sure. <laughs> Um, a small little mechanical uh, robot uh, comes out. And what, what does it look like in its small size? It's like a cute little thing. Um, it's like uh, it's like mostly head at the moment, um, with like small limbs because it's not meant to stay. Yeah, like, I, I envision kind of like, like a, a 
almost like BMO. I but can't like visualize what BMO looks like right now. Uh, Adventure Time is like a little box, almost like a Game oh. Boy with a face oh, and like yeah, little yeah, arms yeah. and legs. Um, kind of, kind of like that. It's almost like it's it's a temporary, be a temporary build that's supposed to not be that small. Sure. Um, so it's like the framework for actually a more complicated head than that, almost like a. It, it's gonna represent some kind of creature, and then just little little limbs that'll just work for now. Um, and it sure. has this speech. But um, it, it <laughs> and it sort of like animates to life and looks towards you for direction. Yeah. Um, be like, Maxwell, look around. Looking around. <laughs> <laughs> you need to that. Uh, yeah. Can you send those to me? That would be excellent. Yeah. Well, those are mine. Yeah. Uh, and it's looking around, and it also sees no one. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna run on top of the seats to get to where this little girl is in the audience because she's the only other one I see, right? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna Thank I'm you gonna too. I'm gonna yeah. stop in the row behind her and be like, "Hey, little girl, what just happened? Did your robot do that?" Uh, no. Excuse me. Who are you? Uh, the only other guy that survived whatever the hell that just was. I'm sorry, you didn't quite look around. I think we have two more people in here, but... Uh, they're they're in the foyer, sorry. Oh, My just bad. kidding, sorry. <laughs> You're like, um, no, I just got him out because you didn't do this either, right? Uh, no, I just asked, why would I have asked you? you? You know what, never mind. What? Where did everybody go? Why do you think a 13-year-old girl would know that? I don't know, don't you go to this school? Does this happen often? You know I go to this school. Do you know me? Do you know who I am? Why else would you be here in the audience of the show at this school if you didn't go here? You look like you go here. Am I wrong? Can we no. hear them? And as consummate yeah. professionals be like, we hear people, there's no one else around, and Mamba yeah. and yes, I kind of go in to see what absolutely. the hell's... Why people are screaming. Sure. Yeah, yeah, the two of you here. pour in. My buddy Max will take you out. Don't you touch me. I'm not looking for a fight. I'm just looking for my siblings. Hey, uh, hello. I whirl around. <laughs> uh, you see two very tall men uh, who look very imposing uh, have just entered the room. Yeah, so uh, where'd everyone go? And who the fuck are you? I'm wary of these two. I don't trust yeah. them. Yeah, I don't either, but being approached in the same way i guess i'm i'm not as um yelling <laughs> i don't know what's the word sure I'm not jumping to conclusions as fast mamba you got something to say no okay listen clearly something strange has happened and we're the only people here who have realized that that's gone down so why don't we maybe i don't know work together we can use max here and see maybe what's happened because clearly Max? we went from everybody around us in a play, right? You all saw it too? You came here for a play? Uh, yeah, came here, yeah, uh-huh. We came, yep. Okay, you're yep. being weird, but anyway, okay, well- we I'm not the one with the talking robot, on. little girl. I'm sorry? Don't be. Okay, now why don't we, I don't know, look around? This is super weird. I agree. Uh, suddenly, all four of you hear, somewhat distantly, what sounds like rapid gunfire coming from outside the theater and loud explosions. Let's investigate. <laughs> I pull out I pull out a knife from my pocket and I sprint past the dudes at the door towards whatever I that sound is. reactively pull out my knife thinking he's about to jump me, but <laughs> don't. I'm just gonna, like, hop over the... She's in, like, the middle of the... I guess she, like, went out the aisle by this point. Um, she's just gonna just backpedal a little bit toward the stage and just kind of like, maybe, I don't know if there are any buttons on Max, I didn't quite get there. Uh, button, what are you looking to do? I, I just want, um, basically I'll just say, um, Max defense mode. She <laughs> yeah. just like puts up his arms. <laughs> and I'll just hold him for now. Well, you stay here with Techno. We'll go out there. Oh, come on. Come on. Ugh, fine. Little girl, I'm staying here with you. You don't I have don't to call like me little girl. I'm Lexi. 
All right, Lexi, I'm staying here with you. You gonna give me the pleasure of your name? No. <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> um, excellent. Not uh, very so polite. Pa uh, no, Pauline not. Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> Polly and Mamba exit out to the foyer, I guess, and Lexi and Chance stay in the uh, in the theater. Um, Polly and Mamba, uh, the two of you don't see anything immediately out the like glass doors or anything, but you can definitely hear some kind of militant behavior in the distance. I I turn to Mamba and I'm like, okay, what happened for you? Was I'm everyone gonna, just gonna, here I'm one cover second? Your mouth right now. Shh. These could be OMA that we're dealing with here. It could be what? OMA. <laughs> I need you to stay silent. Uh, that's not really my thing, sir. I'm sorry. Do you want to die? Do, do you want Frankie and Frankie? Uh, of course. Where else would then I be we, here? Then you need to stay silent so we can get Frankie and Frankie. Do you know where they are? I pull. I put my knife to his like to his neck. No. But they might. They being O M A, whatever that was. Can we can we can we look out? Can we peer outside the window and and see anything going on? That uh, you you suddenly see a man or a, a figure, um, <laughs> like sprinting and like checking over their shoulder every so often, clearly being pursued. Who's that? Is he one of you guys? Not any of mine. Um, and uh, this person, you th like you see them sprinting and like you start to slowly like they are very determinedly sprinting. And as they get closer, you can kind of see that they um, they have dark black hair parted at the center um, and they have like very vibrantly blue eyes and a mask covering their mouth. And like every inch of their body is covered in some kind of like black skin tight clothing. And they have uh, a Daft Punk Discovery t-shirt over the like skin tight black stuff on their top and they're wearing gloves and then uh, a, a pair of like uh, dark shorts, uh, athletic shorts over their uh, skin tight like legging type things and black shoes, black athletic shoes. Uh, and this and going they're, on there outside the door? Uh, they're, running to they're running towards you from outside the door, yeah. And they suddenly divert a little bit and they run at the wall next to you instead of at the glass door. I, like they're uh, running towards the wall. I break out of Mamba's grip and I go and open the door to look where he's going. No one uh, breaks out of Mamba's grip. <laughs> <laughs> you open the door and peer to the left and you see as they're sprinting, they rip off their gloves and put them in their like, like a bite down on it through their mask. And then they go like this and they shove their hands into the concrete wall and it like liquefies. And then they open the wall and jump through and then they reshut the wall and start running through. And now they're in the foyer and you, you're you just like watching as this person just ran, ran essentially through a solid wall um, and uh, is now running through the foyer towards the theater. Hey buddy, we got a door here. Uh, they unhand the gloves and put them back on and they're like it, and the then, doors confuse you sir <laughs> um are you how the hell are you all here how the hell are you here where is everyone's you? gone can this you use school. can can you use the brink what are you talking about at this point, do you think it's okay if I, I think that Lexi would have gotten impatient and wanted to go check it out? Like she's... it's only been like it's only been like twenty five seconds. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, All right, Jesus. Lexi. All right, she Lexi. Just listen. A second. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Let's go. She um, was the, already going. <laughs> the two of you are the two of you are oh, are, are, sure. are are sort of um, Wait, Lexi, jogging, <laughs> and uh, just as you're about to. Uh, uh, running through Ryan, uh, this person, I almost said their name already. Uh, they they turn and they hear something in the theater and they look and they go, are there more of you? Like human beings in general. <laughs> like people <laughs> here. This is New York City. There's 9 million of us. What's your yeah, problem? You, you know what I mean. Did everyone yeah. disappear hey. and you're the only Hello, people left? Yes. Yeah, you uh, are. Again. Uh, 
There's another Who person. the fuck are you? <laughs> uh, they go, um, do you two know what the brink is? Pointing at Lexi and uh, Chance. The what? Uh, okay, none of you know what it is. And there's four of you all here just by coincidence? Maybe Dr. Rell is right. That hypothesis is looking more standard now. Um, okay, uh, hi, uh, my name is Ryan. Um, uh, and- I'm gonna look at um, her friend next to her and say, look, somebody can introduce themselves properly. I just look at you like. Um, and uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan goes, also, I don't, I don't love Guy. Um, uh, uh, it's they, them for me, please. Um, also, uh, we got to get the fuck out of here. Uh, please follow me closely if you don't want to die in the next two minutes. Uh, I'm going to need a little more information you. than that. Yeah. Well, we don't really have like a ton of time. Um, uh, and oh, they, I'm ready they to go. say, I don't need to be here anymore. I'm good. Oh, we up. They say, just, um, okay, there's, uh, how do I explain this? Uh, a lot of uh, guys, bad guys, uh, following me very quickly, guns, um, and they want to kill me. And when they see you, they will want to kill you. Um, so we should, um, we should go, uh, and you should follow very closely. Be waiting for, let's go, come on. Look, I'm ready, come on. Max, stay alert. Get moving. Uh, Max is like, alert! <laughs> Uh, right, Polly, Mamba, any thoughts? I, uh, I am, I don't trust this guy even a little bit. Uh, excuse they, me, this person. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, they sense that and they walk up to you and they place their hands on you, Polly, and they go, do you think they're not gonna kill you just because you're, they're after me? If they find four extra brink sensitive people inside this thing, they're gonna kill you or kidnap you. Either way, net negative. Okay, listen, when we get where we need to go, you'll explain more, right? Sure. Okay, and you, and so look at um, Polly, because I don't think she knows his name yet. <clears throat> um, look, he seems to be the only one that's no that knows what's going on. So either we listen and do something or we stay alone and maybe die to you. Listen, Meatball. Right. Listen, Meatball. He's not the one with the guns. Let's go. I'm tired of waiting on your ass. Uh, and Ryan looks at all of you and is like, look, I know things are hectic, but it's they. And then just runs through the door right. and is not waiting any longer for any of you. And is like, fucking follow me. Yeah. <laughs> this person, sorry. It's fine, it's fine. It's he's, very quick. He's with him. Um, and uh, they uh, they take out their phone and quickly dial something and then uh, put their phone into their ear and they're like, Hey, it's me. Uh, meet at 68 and 3rd. Uh, we have four extra guests somehow. Um, so, you know, just be ready for defense, I guess. Uh, and then quickly hangs up and puts their phone in their pocket. And they're like, all right, let's go. And removes their gloves and puts them in their mouth again. And is like, OK. Uh, and the four of you or the five of you sprint through the uh, the like middle section between the seats and they uh, kick open the doors and then run straight at the wall and uh, again, put their hands into the wall and slap it open. This is the first time that Chance and Lexi, you're seeing this. Um, they open the wall and then they hold it open. They're like, go, 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 go. Uh, I'm gonna need an explanation on that and she'll run through. <laughs> I just, I stop for a moment and then go, you gotta teach me how to do that and then go through. <laughs> and they're like, not physically possible, but I wish I could. <laughs> I'll go on in. Blues could do. We can too. <laughs> I look back over my shoulder. Like, Who the hell did they pair me with? <laughs> what in the? <laughs> what in the? <laughs> um. L O L. Uh. So then, as all four of you go through, Polly, I assume you also enter this this like new doorway. Can I can I see the other people on the other side before I go in? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. You surmise I... that this is literally just like a parting the wall. Oh, it's not like a portal somewhere else. We're just going no, no, on whatever no. the other side of the wall is. They are opening the concrete. I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm through. Okay. Uh, and they step through and when they release, they then like smush it back together and it instantly solidifies. Um, and then uh, they 
uh, run and get ahead of the four of you and looks quickly at a map on their phone and is like, okay, um, uh, and you're in a sort of like backstage area because they went through walls. So now they're just opening successive walls for you to go through because it's faster to get out that way, they think. Um, and it's just the same, you know, sort of Benny Hill in and out and in and out um, mm -hmm. through the successive walls. Uh, and Ryan, uh, eventually you make it outside and the rain is pouring now. And they're like, you know, sort of squinting their eyes uh, and they're right behind you because they shut the final one. And now all five of you are outside. Um, and they say, uh, um, uh, Okay, uh, they're like, all right. So they're gonna think we're in there. So we're gonna beeline to 68th and 3rd Avenue. If we get separated, that's where you need to go, okay? Okay. Right, sure. Okay, What's that? Right. A friend of mine, a colleague. How many more people are there What's here? going on, I'll, I'll meet you there. Uh, it's just the two of us. Where are we right now? Are we uh, you are at 68th and 5th. Oh, so we only need to go two blocks. Two long blocks. Or wait, no. No, well, quite a no, few. No, it's two we short got, blocks. It... We got we got Park Avenue, Lexington, and all that's in Madison in between. Yeah, so three, four Avenue blocks. Four, yeah. four Avenue blocks. Um, New York makes a lot of sense. There's numbers, and then there's words in between, and there's more numbers <laughs> as if the words never even existed. Avenue of the Stars. Yeah. Oh, oh no, that's sixth. No, it's not. Um, okay, excellent. Um, so you just start running, um, and uh, I'm gonna have actually everybody roll initiative right now. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, chat room, how's everybody feeling so far? Everybody still hanging in there? Dangers? <laughs> you, you okay? <laughs> Excellent. And players, how are we feeling? Oh. <laughs> not, not good at that. Um, and Foo, Other your than my role... rolls, great. <laughs> Foo, your role will apply to the robots. You don't have to roll twice. Um, oh, so oh, let's okay. get Lexi. Are you sure? Uh, so initiative is roll plus. Oh, I think it's uh, Dex. Four. 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 Uh, chance. Eight. Eight. And Polly. Nine. Nine. And Mamba. Also eight. I nice. first with nine. Oh my god, this is off to a great start. <laughs> go meatball, go. Um, so you're all just still sprinting, and you clear the first block no problem. But then Ryan peers back and just goes. Wah. And they uh, then stuff their gloves in their pocket. They're like, I don't think I'm going to need them. Um, and you all sort of peer behind and there is like a small militia um, in tow. Uh, they're all wearing these like dragon masks um, and like armor proof vests and clothing and stuff. Um, and uh, we're like they we're speed running in their dragons. <laughs> oh, no. I actually did not think of that. Um, uh, they kind of look like SWAT team members, except like full visors. You can't see their eyes at all. Um, face masks, everything, the whole nine yards. Uh, and there's like 10 of them in tow right now. And uh, they're maybe a block behind you. Uh, and Ryan says, just go, 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 go. And Ryan turns around and stops. And they're first anyway, so they're just gonna go. Um, they uh, stick their hands into the ground and pull up concrete from the sidewalk. And then they like mold it into like snowballs basically. And they just wind up and like throw the snowballs. And the second, the instant they leave Ryan's hands, they solidify into like solid concrete. Uh, and one of them decks the guy in the head and like kills him. Um, <laughs> right. He's like, he's like, and just falls back down into the ground and drops his rifle. And he was like ahead of the pack. Uh, and uh, then Ryan uh, basically uh, runs over to the sidewalk, puts their hands in, and just starts bringing up walls uh, across the street and creates a full wall along the block and then turns around and starts running back to you guys. 
uh, and uh, that'll be that for now. Um, and they're trying to catch up to you, but you're all quite fast, especially Polly. Uh, Polly is like, is it's like fit. taking off. No, um, <laughs> so, uh, Polly, um, or is there anything? So I guess we'll go. You're not really in combat yet. Um, great. We'll just stick with this for now. Um, there are cars like parked and there are cars that are just like in the middle of the road stopped with no one inside. Um, and cars that look like must have just crashed into like buildings and stuff as if they're, you know, if they got like Avengers blipped, basically. Um, and uh, Ollie, uh, there is a, a, a like a row of cars in front of you obstructing your path. OK, uh, I'm going to just vault on top of one of them and start sprinting along the roofs of the cars. Uh, roll athletics for me. Seventeen. Yeah, you uh, you're able to easily vault on, and you run across them uh, uh, and uh, are able to clear over to the other side. Uh, and we'll go to uh, Chance. I get in one and try to hotwire it. <laughs> um, you are able. Uh, we'll actually roll. Um, oh, it'd be cool if there were like a mechanic stat of some kind thoughts 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 uh hang on one second could you roll probably sleight of hand right yeah let's do sleight of hand that's fine i want to replace something like arcana with like like yeah I'm, I'm gonna do that moving forward i'll come up with something oh, okay okay 13. Uh, you are able to hotwire the car due to your past experience. Um, and, uh, you know, it comes to life. Uh, and it's some, beep, like, beep. shitty, it's some, like, shitty 2000 Toyota Camry. Um, oh, beep, beep. And, uh, and you, you wager, like, if you throw it in reverse and just ram the car behind you and, like, go forward and back, you'd be able to clear a way to turn left and start driving. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, would you like to wait for anyone, or...? Are they like right next to me? I figured uh, I'd get Lexi them all the way. Lexi and Mamba are, are just now catching up. Lexi and Mamba are right there. Eh, it's unlocked. Beep, beep. Uh, Lexi, Mamba, <laughs> would either of you like to get in? I will. Absolutely. Um, Lexi, you seat. hop in hop in the back seat. Mamba hops in the front. And uh, uh, you're, you know, Ryan is like, don't worry about me. Ryan's like, just go. Um, and, you know, you were able to pull aside and you catch up with Polly pretty fast. Beep, beep. Uh, I'm going to just hop, hop onto on the hood of the car. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, there are like the like bike rack things on the top um, and there you're is. just like holding on to one of them and it's exceptionally uncomfortable. Uh, and you're just like. Uh, and you make it, I mean, it, you know, it does not take long to drive uh, three blocks uh, with no obstruct, but you're veering around cars that are, you know, like I said, in the middle of the road. Um, and you- Everyone good with techno? <laughs> um, you make it to, you're, you're just about to cross uh, uh, the cross street that you're looking for, 68th and 3rd. <laughs> uh, and there's a guy leaning up against uh, a door frame and he's wearing uh he's wearing like a salmon t-shirt that goes beneath his waist like a long salmon t-shirt and short blue like cute little shorts um and he's got sort of spiky uh, uh like well-dressed uh fun orange hair with like a a buzz fade around the the like the you know from his ears around to the back it's a very like hip uh haircut and he's just sort of like standing there I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off the roof of the car and do like a roll to reduce fall damage. Sure. And, um, uh, well, uh, uh, chance was slowing down. You're fine. You can do it like a safety oh, roll. Oh, I was. That's fine. I, I did, oh, oh, I did yeah, like I the full that's speed. Like... <laughs> oh, you're doing a. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you skid to a stop and Polly is thrown off the roof. <laughs> yes. Um, Polly, could you roll athletics for me, please? Yeah. Uh, and I, I would actually roll a roll a strength saving throw. Can I keep the roll I just rolled? Sure. Okay. Uh, what was that? 24. Okay. 
Um, yeah, He's you, you are thrown off and in midair, you contort to land on your hands, plant and safely roll over your shoulder and get to your feet. But you're like, that's just fine. Uh, definitely the fastest dismount you've ever had. Shouldn't have said that. Um, and, uh, oh boy. Uh, this guy walks up to you and he's young. He's probably 16. Um, he's got like a, a light brown skin and very kind eyes, uh, but he looks kind of sad. Like not sad in the sense that like something ter terrible is just happening. He just kind of looks like down in the dumps. Um, and uh, like I said, he's like 16 years old and he walks up to you kind of like, you know, like bounding over to you guys. And he's like, are you guys the four stragglers? And you must be Kingdom Hearts. What? What? Who are you? Okay. Are you with Ryan, kid? Uh, uh, no, Ryan. Well, Ryan's my friend. Well, I don't know. Maybe we're friends. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, are you, are you the guy that he was telling us about? Uh, Yeah, yeah. My name's Justin. Justin, what are we supposed to be doing now? I think escaping. I introduce myself. I say, hi, Justin. I'm Chance. Oh, hi, hi. Uh, and wow. Justin, Justin puts both hands around and is like, I don't like the rain. Well, you want like somewhere it. else to go? Can we go inside somewhere? Yeah. Oh, well, we got a rendezvous point, I guess. Yeah, where's that? Let's go to there. He's like, he's like just a kid. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you know, it, it, you sense he's hiding something, but like not intentionally. Um, and he goes, uh, we should probably wait for Ryan. He said, they, absolutely they, they, do they, not do that. Uh, well, they're they're in charge of this, so you know they're my they're my colleagues. So I feel like I should wait. They're kind of like my boss in a way. So okay, go but on they ahead. Had... Is there anywhere at least safe for us to be right now? It's probably the hell. Shoulders really quick and say, Ryan said something about defense. What do you know about this? Oh, that's probably my job. Okay, I can do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, and uh, Justin goes, and Justin suddenly perks up and is like, oh yeah, we're gonna need that right now. And Justin goes, do any of you guys, uh, do you guys have like a water bottle? Like a water bottle or like a glass of some kind of liquid? I have the crunched one. Uh, I never got to throw it away. Uh, that's not enough. Uh, well, hang on. And he takes it from you and opens it and just holds it up into the rain. And he's like, cool. Uh, you guys, we're gonna have to fight a couple guys in a second here. Um, uh, we're gonna have to fight a couple guys in a second here. So uh, I'll disarm them and then just like hand to hand it, uh, I think, because I, I gather you guys probably can't use a brink. I'm really sorry about this. This Buddy, sucks. we got, there's like a giant puddle right there on the corner if you need some water. Oh, that's a good idea. And he scoops up some water into the water bottle and he's like, cool. Uh, thanks, I'm sorry, I hate, I hate the rain. Uh, it sucks, it's not like I get wet. I don't wanna be wet. Um, and then uh, he's like, cool, I'm going to disarm the guys that are coming in. It seems like like five guys, maybe. I don't know. Um, and uh, do you guys take care of him? Uh, well, I'll take a few of them, but, you know, OK, have fun. This uh, is a 13 year old girl. Really? Those guys had guns. Yeah, they're not going to have guns when I'm done with them. That's what I'm saying. bomba has got this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> um, Justin opens the water bottle, and uh, you notice at this moment that Justin has a bracelet on, like this bracelet that's attached to like a fingerless glove on his left hand. And Justin grabs like the wrist part of the bracelet and turns it to the left. And suddenly you all feel this overwhelming pressure coming from Justin, uh, unlike anything you've ever felt before. It's like this wave of energy uh, courses over you. Um, and Justin's like, oh, right, first time. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. And that just goes, uh, throws the water bottle into the air. Uh, and as the stream of water comes down, he touches it and he says, immediate forecast. And the water suddenly begins swirling above his head from the water bottle. And he's like essentially water bending it. Um, and uh, he... Uh, you gotta Boo, teach to your me question, how to do that. Boo, to answer your question, uh, I think he's fine. Um, I don't think I don't think he's gonna be uh, affected by rain. Um, okay. okay. Uh, and Justin's like, yeah, I, I can't. Is the thing. Um, and then he swirls the water into like a, a stream that's like spinning in his hands, and uh, suddenly three guys 
with guns come in and he just goes like this and the water and slices their hands and they all drop their weapons. And then he like moves his hands more and the water picks up the three guns like a ring that would hold keys or something. And he brings it back to him and he throws them up onto a building. Uh, and then he's like, okay guys, I'll take one, you take the other two. How's that sound? We, we could have used those guns. Who had the guns? What? Oh, you want those? Massive party foul. <laughs> yeah, Mamba. Seriously. Look, I know that they're Are bad. Are you dumb, murder kid? Is, murder is like super illegal and awful. I don't know it's what. I'm not having a good day. Tell that to the poof police. Everyone's gone. Oh <laughs> my god. Uh, Lexi will go over to was it Justin. Yeah. And be like, it's okay. Let's keep our head on straight. We can do this. Hey, Paul, I can't. Be I can't believe I'm saying this, but you seem like the the most adept person here. How do you feel in a fight? Are you asking? Meatball. Oh. oh. I mean, I can hold my own. I'm just. We could have used those guns and made it a hell of a lot easier for all of us. I agree. I agree but here we are. Uh, as you've been <laughs> discussing this, the three guys just like start running at you. <laughs> Uh, and Justin is like, I'm sorry, and then jumps out and just puts one of them in a headlock and the water like goes in his <laughs> nose and th the water takes the helmet off and goes in the guy's nose and goes <laughs> and Justin's like, I'm sorry. Uh, and, uh, that would have been a lot less brutal too, kid. I, just, I can't. I um, slyly bend down and pick up the crushed water bottle he was using. Okay. And pocket uh, it. Excellent. Um, I love it. Uh, excellent. Uh, up first, let's go with Polly. Let's start with you. Uh, and there are two guys ahead of you, and they're just like fist up. Okay. Uh, are either of them near a wall or structure of some kind? Uh, no, you're in the middle of the street. Okay. Um, There's the car. They're right by. They're kind of. They're like ten feet from the car, which is to your right. That's stopped and skidded. Justin's got the guy in a headlock, like right there, and then the two guys are in front of the the th uh, the four of you. Okay. Uh, how far away? Um, they're like 10 feet from you as well. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna sprint right at that guy and try to tackle him to the ground. Okay. Uh, either one. Doesn't, whichever, whoever's closer to me. This is a grapple like a, attempt? It's a full-on tackle. I'm gonna be like Superman in the air by the time I hit him. So okay. are we in like battle with like weapons and stuff like that right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um... Uh, so you're attempting to grapple him, which I think is a strength roll? Yeah. Or unless you have a thing for it. I do not. It, it like somehow does not come up that often. Just imagining Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> You've never um, been in a fight before. <laughs> we'll say you'll just roll strength against theirs uh, for now. <clears throat> okay. Um, so roll just a basic strength check. 17. Uh, they fail. So you're able to grapple them to the ground. Okay. Do I do any damage on this? Because I'm, I'm, I'm hitting him at full speed. Yeah, with my whole yeah, body yeah, weight. yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, why don't you roll? You would have hit their armor class anyway with that. Uh, we'll roll like an unarmed something basic unarmed. Just roll a d4 plus strength. Okay. Five. Right on. Uh, he I mean, it takes he takes a lot of force to bring this guy down. He's back on the ground and you're, you're pressing into him. Um, I assume that's your turn. Yeah, I've also I've got my I've got my knife still in my hand. I'm I'm holding it up to his throat, and I guess whenever I have another turn, I'm gonna try to communicate with this guy. Sure. Uh, up next is Chance. So he's tackling one. There's three guys. One has water up his nose. The other one's on the ground, and then there's one more guy who's running towards you. Okay. <clears throat> can I can I grab the robot and try and throw it at him? Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, Lexi's turn is before the enemies anyway, so we can take the robot's turn now if you throw the robot at it. I just grab the robot and say, uh, Maxwell, attack mode, and chuck it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's 
arms are flailing behind it, it goes <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it, it lands on the guy's face. Lexi, what would you like it to do? I believe it's only programmed to respond to me. It was frightened. It was frightened. <laughs> You've given, You've given it intelligence. You've given it intelligence. But it will still respond to your, like, we'll say your sort of command as to how attacking works. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to turn around and kick. I'm sorry, Chance was it? <laughs> yeah, Chance, yeah. I'm going to kick you really hard in the shin. Ow! Don't ever touch Damn Maxwell. not me! Maxwell! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Is there anything around him? I can't really pick too small. I can't pick anything up. <laughs> uh, uh, well, he's 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 currently like grappled onto this guy's head, and the guy's like flailing around. Um, uh, on the ground, there's like some rubble, some like rocks. Okay, I don't think he can. If he falls, he can't get back up. Um, no. I think I think he would like. I mean, he'll get damaged. I'll be like Maxwell, hold on. <laughs> He can he can slam, can't he? Yes. <laughs> you don't think you would want him to attack? He can try. It's not going to do anything. Ah, you never know. Okay. Magikarp, use splash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Splash. Basically. Splash. Like, splash. Maxwell Slam. To hit. <laughs> Slamming. <laughs> We're gonna have to talk about his voice. <laughs> yeah, well, the, I, this was spilled upon me. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Slamming. How's that? I was fine for now, yeah. I figured we wouldn't go with the what you want until later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When it's exactly. when it's when it's the way you want it. We'll talk under her breath, like God. I gotta update his voice modulator. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you do. So I gotta roll. <laughs> what are we? Are we I'm rolling. A uh, D twenty plus three. Oh, a D20 plus three, okay. Um, I got a nat 20, so 23. Nice, okay, well, I oh, believe wait. you don't have to... Minus three, well, okay, whatever. Nat 20, but it's so it's 20. Yeah, so it's still a nat 20. Yeah. Um, uh, so it will double the damage, which was one, <laughs> and it will now do two. <laughs> it's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's not nothing. <laughs> Wow. Uh, chance, uh, or sorry, Polly. How much damage did you do? Five or six? Five. I did five damage to him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the robot just like, just like claps the guy's head uh, with, with with his arms, um, and uh, that is all he does. And then uh, Maxwell uh, sort of like pushes off and lands. How far, how far is he from me? Uh, ten feet. Um, and that guy's disoriented. A little bit, yeah, now that this whole kerfuffle has happened. I want to run over and catch him. Okay, you're able to. Okay. Um, you're able to run over and, and catch him in your arms. Yeah. I'm going to glare at Chance. <laughs> Did I take damage from the shin kick? Uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. No. Um, <laughs> excellent. Uh, so, yeah, the, the guy's sort of disoriented, whatever. Um, and we'll move to... Uh, and, Lexi, you can back off uh, uh, safely. Um, yeah. And just Chance, I assume that's your turn? Yeah, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, fair. That's sort of the point. And my shin um, really hurts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mamba, it's all you. All right, who do we have in front of us? Uh, you have the guy that Polly's grappling, and you have the guy that Justin has in a headlock, and you have the guy who just got hit but is up. Ooh, I'll take the guy that's hit but is up. I'll use my, uh, my fast movement to dash over there. A little spin kick. That's right. A little spin kick. Nice. Nice. Uh, roll. Mamba strikes. <laughs> Mamba strikes. Uh, probably dex for like a spin kick. Uh, so roll d20 plus dex. Okay. 19. That hits. Uh, is... And then unarmed. Unarmed for this spin kick, we'll do 1d6 plus dex. Sort of just winging it. Five on this. damage. Five damage. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, and he falls to his butt. Uh, these guys clearly are not like that well trained, other than to just use a weapon. Um, and uh, well, Lexi took her turn, uh, so yeah, it is I their kind of turn. Did it out of order. Yeah, it's fine. It was before the enemies, so I felt fine with it, like swapping a little bit. Um, so it's now the the baddies' turns. Um, the guy that is on the ground with you. 
uh, Polly attempts to break free, he's going to roll a uh, strength save against your strength modifier or against your strength stat. Or I guess you could just both roll because you're holding him. So you roll strength, he'll roll strength. Both roll strength save. Let's do that. Strength save. Yeah, both roll strength save. Okay, I got a nat one. He breaks, pushes you off and skitters back and gets to his feet. Uh, and he runs up and attempts to hit you, Polly. Am I still on the ground at this point, or? Uh, I would say so, yeah. You're like on all fours. Or maybe on your butt, pushed it back onto your butt. Um, he does not hit you. Uh, he swings and misses. And uh, we'll go... Just if you care, I think he would get advantage on a prone enemy. If it, for a melee that's attack. That's true, that's true, that's true. I do care. It might not matter. Uh, yeah, that does not hit you, still. Okay. Um, the next guy, uh, will, uh, use his movement to get up and try to hit Mamba. That hits. Uh, if you... You have to roll with disadvantage, or with my evasive footwork feature. Ooh, sick. Is that just always? That's always. That's my feet. Um, wow. well, uh, he still hits. Okay. It was a 16 and a 19 without modifiers. Oh, well. Uh, you take four damage. Um, uh, he just like a, a right hook or maybe a jab straight to the face. Mm. Um, but you're Mamba, you're Mamba, baby. Um, excellent. And the other guy, the guy with Justin is dying, like actively dying. <laughs> uh, there's no helping him. He's got nothing going on. Uh, Ryan finally catches up and vaults uh, uh, the car and rolls out and looks around and sees what is going on and is like, cool, you guys got this under control? I'll meet you at the helipad. And then keeps running. And Justin is just like, okay, I'm sorry about this. And pulls the water up through the guy's eye sockets. And, just, and the guy falls dead on the ground. And then the water's like all bloody now. And he's like, ew, ew, ew. And he sort of spins it around to get the blood out. Uh, and then uh, collects it back up. And uh, we'll go to Polly. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to while I'm while I'm down on my butt, I'm gonna try to like sp uh, spring up on my hands and do like a sweeping kick for the guy's legs. Okay. Uh, roll dex. Roll a d20 plus dex. Oops, I fell off the table. Twenty-two. Hits. Okay. Uh, let's do one d6 plus dex. Six damage. Baby, 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 baby. <laughs> uh, you kick him and he falls to the ground and falls unconscious. Um, he's out for the count. Nice work. Uh, <laughs> uh, up next is Chance. Okay, who's left? Uh, just the one guy that uh, Mamba was fighting. Okay. Is he okay? Got it. He's upright um, and he just punched Mamba. He's not looking great. Oh, can I just go and punch him? Yeah. Try. Uh, roll d20 plus strength. I believe that is a nine. That does not hit. Oh, well. well. <laughs> <laughs> you go for a, not, a jab. <laughs> and he I'm just not very experienced it. in fighting. Fair. Um, again, this in combat encounter is supposed to sort of be messy and all over the place. Um, excellent. Uh, so that'll be your turn. And Ch uh, Mamba, it's you. Well, Mamba's pretty peeved. Uh, so he's going to deck him once more again. Sure. Uh, oh, no, peeved, he said. Peeved, he <laughs> said. Hadok, Hadok is pissed. <laughs> yeah. Mamba is peeved. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll do some alliteration. Like, Mamba is mipped? I don't know. Oh, don't there know. you go. All right, well, Mamba's, Mamba's mipped. So he's going to crack his knuckles, look him dead in the eyes, and deck him one, a solid right hook. Sure, d20 plus strength. Absolutely. Right, 16? Mamba's that hits. All right, 16. Uh, and then roll a d4 plus strength. Thank you. I was looking for that. Or three. You 
<laughs> and he falls to his back, also unconscious. Uh, and Justin is like wiping away tears. And he comes up to you guys. And he's like, great work, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I hate it when it rains. Um, and he uh, he picks the he's like, where'd the water bottle go? He's right there. I was right there. Um, Crazy. <laughs> And then he's just like, fine, I guess I'll just give it up. And he just like spurts the water away. Uh, and then he's like, all right, follow me, you guys. Uh, and you start, you take off running again. Um, and in, in the interest of time, uh, you make it to this uh, uh, this building that's about two blocks further. Uh, you're now like almost at the river, uh, which would be the East River. Um, and uh, Ryan is waiting at the base of a building, banging on the door. Um, and uh, Justin shows up. He's like, why isn't it open? He's like, or uh, Ryan goes, uh, Ryan's like, I don't <sighs> look. If we go the stairs, it's going to be longer anyway. And I think they've barricaded and did it. Can we just go up? And Justin's like, no, I don't. I don't like the way we do that. Is there a fire escape? Uh, no, this is like a skyscraper. Okay. Um, and Ryan's like, it's the fastest way. I waited for you guys and we're going to do it this way. And Justin's like, fine, okay, uh, is anybody here afraid of heights? No, are you gonna do your little concrete thing again? And Ryan's like, sort of. Uh, and Justin asks if anyone is afraid of heights. No. I got the better. No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, that's good. Uh, I'll, I'll go I don't on think the Mamba's bottom. Mamba's afraid of anything. <laughs> um. Uh, Ryan, so Ryan removes their gloves and puts them in their pockets and then takes off their shoes, ties the laces together and puts them over their uh, their shoulders, takes off their socks and stuffs them in the shoes, slams their feet into the concrete wall, which liquefies, and then starts making a ladder out of the side of the building, climbing up and creating footholds and handholds as they go. Uh, and the second they remove their feet or hands from the slot, it solidifies into a good handhold. And they do it in such a gap that you can, like, pinch it so it's a proper ladder rather than, like, this. Um, and Ryan's like, this is the only way. Oh. Um, I, oh, I, look at, I look at Lexi, I'm like, can you do that? Can you make it up there? Of course I can do that. I train every almost every day. Hello. You train? Like, You're the she thing. does. And then she's just gonna start going. Um, it's difficult, but like, so long as you don't think about it, it's fine. And also all the holds are completely dry because they're brand new. We'll probably um, just call and be like, don't make them too far apart. <laughs> and Ryan's like, awful. copy that. And is like guess, intentionally making them thinner. I Thank guess you. if a little girl can do it. <laughs> uh, and Justin is like, uh, guys, they're coming. And uh, Polly and Mamba, as you look to your left, you just see a crowd of dudes, uh, like 10 or 20 dudes. Um, and Justin's like, uh, 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 okay, uh, uh, climb. And Justin runs to like the river. This building's like right on the river and flops his hands in the river. And Ryan's like, Justin, that is a bad idea. And Justin can't hear at this point. And a huge amount of the river comes out and just starts swirling around the building. Um, and uh, Justin looks like very strained by doing this, uh, like in, a, in an immense amount of physical pain. And he's like, please go. Lexi's got to stop for like a second to look at this. And like, sure, absolutely. Whoa. OK, better hurry you up. got to teach me how to do that. Justin can't even hear you at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just climb, I assume, all of you. Yep, what a thrill on the way up. <laughs> uh, it, it gets scary. I mean, this is like a probably a 200 foot building. Um, so you, you know, as you get to the top, it's like, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up. She's gonna have um, Maxwell on her head so he can actually grip with his little legs kind of sure, around sure. her head and be in case she loses grip. Okay, maybe. sure. Hold on for um, a moment. Let's have everybody, as you get to the top, roll athletics, uh, or actually roll a dexterity saving throw for me, please, everybody. Oh, yeah. Uh, and let's start with Lexi. Eight. Eight, okay. Polly. 
21. Mamba? 18. And Chance? 14. Um, Lexi, you lose grip of the hole just for a second and start to fall backwards. Uh, let's have Maxwell roll a strength saving throw. He doesn't have saving throws. Uh, so you can just roll his strength. Uh, well, yeah. let's roll uh, roll d20 minus one based on your stats. Okay, uh, seven. Okay, Maxwell is unable to do it. Ryan sees, Ryan is at the top, mm -hmm. sees this and jumps down and slams their hand into the wall and starts falling down alongside those of you that are climbing the ladder. And Polly, uh, can you roll a strength saving throw as well, please, Polly? I'm, I'm gonna die. <laughs> so it's Seven. one. Okay, you reach out and you're un... Lexi grabs your hand and she slips out and you're unable to catch. Ryan is sliding down the building and slams out an arm and does catch you. Ryan... Okay. <laughs> catches you and then like grabs a chunk and shoves their hand into the wall so far that now their whole body's like doom, 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 going down the wall. And they're like, sorry. Be like, my bad, thank you. Uh, and they put you back on the ladder uh, right after Mamba. Um, and then they begin making their own ladder up faster. Okay. Uh, and you're all able to make it to the top. And Ryan is like trying to get Justin's attention. So they grab a, like a goop of concrete from the, the ceiling and just throw it down so it lands right beside Justin. And he's just, and then he's like, okay. Uh, and he looks at the ladder and looks at the guys and just takes all the water. And you, you all hear Ryan, or you, yeah, you hear Ryan go, don't do that. And then Justin just like pushes the water against the ground and flies up the full building uh, and oh. over judges it by like 10 feet. So he overshoots the lip of the building by like 10 feet. He's like, oh. <laughs> and falls down and just like shh, into the into the roof, but he does make it and he takes four damage. Um, uh, and he gets up. He's like, "Oh, it hurts so bad." Uh, and a lot of the water spl like splashes out and moves a bunch of the guys. And now that you turn around and look, there is a helicopter landing on the helipad. I offer uh, Justin a cookie. Uh, he's like, "Sure." Um, at this point, chance they are. Rumbles. <laughs> uh, and I, give a, I give him a, I give him like a, a handful, like a handful of. Crumbles. It's like chips ahoy. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, thanks. And he's eating it. Uh, the helicopter lands, uh, and Ryan slams open the doors, like in, 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 and they've put their gloves back on and their shoes and everything. Okay, she's in. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody dry clambers off. in. Um, what was that? I'm ready to dry off. Yeah. Uh, and the helicopter starts to take off, and just as it does, the door to the roof slams open, and a bunch of guys spill out, and Ryan is yelling at the helicopter driver, like, go, please, go, and they do, like, an evasive maneuver to the left as gunfire starts flying up, and you're just, like, racing on all sides. Probably most of you have never been in a helicopter before, um, and the helicopter veers and avoids, but as you look down, you 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 hear someone uh, yell at the uh, the guys to cease fire. Um, and uh, as you look out, you just see the like seas of the 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 guys, the like twenty or thirty guys that are on the roof part, and this lone individual in a black suit wearing a very ornate dragon mask that's like incredibly detailed, hands in his pockets, walks out and just looks up at all of you. and the helicopter flies away towards uh, Queens. I want that suit. I'm, uh, I'm glaring at Ryan, and I grabbed their collar, and I said, we need information right now. Who were they? Why is nobody else here? Why do they want you? Ryan's like, I, I promise everything will be answered it's very soon. Yeah, That's Justin where we're killed a guy. Yeah, well, it's either kill or be killed with these guys. Oh. Uh, Fu, we're going to take a break in like five seconds. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh... You know, it's really they... hard to hear it in, in a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, and they, they go basically, they're like, just wait, please. Like five, ten minutes. Um, and the helicopter flies towards Queens and lands you at this building, and you start to see people again. Uh, like... 
you're seeing people below in the streets and you like go down the staircase just... normal people okay. um and you go down the staircase in the skyscraper kind of silently not really sure you know what the the energy of the group is very weird um and justin is like distraught uh and you exit the building and ryan looks around and you walk for a block or two and then there's this sort of like abandoned garage and ryan knocks on the garage and it they ask for a password and ryan like muffles something and then the door opens and you walk in and there is a mysterious man sitting in a seat smoking a fat cigar with like suspenders over his dress shirt top three buttons unbuttoned and a white dress shirt or a white undershirt beneath and we'll go to a quick break Okay, so uh, take an opportunity, use the restroom, uh, uh, get up, stretch your legs, get some water. We're going to go to a brief break. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please consider going to the YouTube description and following our players. If you are currently in the Twitch chat exclamation party to see uh, all of our players Twitch usernames. Also, we have a Discord now. Please join the community Discord. It is the best place to discuss all things speedrunners and dragons, as well as any updates on all things. Hope so dangerous gets to play soon. Uh, hmm. It went longer than I thought, and I am sorry, uh, but very, very, very soon. Yay. All right. Um, break time. I'm also going to use the restroom, so I'll be right back. I think we have a break screen. I don't know. Uh, all right. We'll throw to the break screen. We'll be right back. More Speedrunners and Dragons right after this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Speedrunners and Dragons, Campaign Hello. 3, Episode 1. The players are here. Uh, I, you know, leading up to these things, I always, in the, like, week, right leading up, I'm like, wow, this sucks. And then we start playing, and I'm like, oh, this rocks. Uh, so uh, I'm just happy to be doing it again. Um, but we just left off. The gang escaped, uh, escaped? escaped in a helicopter with Ryan, uh, this this sort of interesting person with this like concrete moving ability and Justin who has some sort of water control maybe um, it seems very sad uh, and uh, we've just gone into a sort of shady looking back alley garage um, and uh, this figure is is smoking this cigar and sitting in sort of like a just a you know one of those like shitty folding chairs metal folding chairs um, and a little rat uh, scurries uh, over, um, uh, Paul, he scurries over your feet. I attempt to kick it. Uh, it, it jolts out of the way and is like... Hey, whoa, 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 it's just a rat. I love rats. Uh, and the guy, the guy takes another puff of the cigar and looks up at all of you and you all look at this guy. Uh, and the rat runs up to him and scurries up, like, his pant leg, not inside, but outside, up his pant leg, and then up onto his shoulder. Uh, and the guy speaks and he goes, Ugh. Sorry, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's Rusty. That's a friend of mine. Yo, what's up? And the rat's mouth talk? opens and emits a human voice. Um, I love uh, this rat! <laughs> well, thank you. I, I've just met you. Um, uh, I, mean, I, mean, not like, I mean, like, just like in a general sense, not in like, I'm talking to a rat right now. What the hell is going I mean, on? You guys, you guys look pretty, pretty shocked by that, but you've seen some pretty crazy stuff. So this honestly can't be that bad. Uh, I mean, I we have... haven't seen anything this crazy. I guess I'm sorry for kicking you. I, I didn't know you were like a real person. What's going on here? No offense. Maxwell no able offense. to like evaluate anything yet? Um, Maxwell's like scanning, 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 and it's just a rat. Yeah. So strange. Is this, is it, is this like completely organic or like talking to the guy with the cigar? Like, is, is he completely organic or like, is there some kind of AI module installed? Like, what's going on? Uh, he takes I, a smoke of the cigar and he goes, You can talk to him. I scurry up and I just like sit there and like kind of cock my head. Um, and he says, uh, he leans back, <clears throat> um, and, uh, he's like, my name's Jameson, by the way. Well, that's what everybody calls me. And he puts a cigar in his mouth and takes out a notepad and flips it open and pulls out a pen. And he's like, what are your names? 
Why would anybody call you something that's not your name? Is your name actually Jameson? What's going on? I don't feel like I have to tell you that. I don't Why... tell you my name either. Um, Lexi's gonna walk up and say, Lexi, and reach out her hand for a handshake. Somebody with some character and shakes her hand and then writes down Lexi. And he's like, anybody else? I roll else? my eyes. I roll my eyes. <laughs> How about you? Gold necklace. I'm not saying anything else until someone gives me some answers about why everybody disappeared, why we just ran across the river from guys with guns, why there's a talking rat. Man, yeah. this crew is so rude. Typical New Yorkers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to turn around and be like, Okay, listen, if you're not going to show them any respect, they won't show you any either. You have to form a mutual partnership, okay? Wait, you read that? You read that in the textbook? I hate that she's right. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Chance. Nice to meet you. Chance, that's good. Chance. Like I said, Jameson. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, nice to meet you, Jameson. All right, and what about you, big fella? Mamba. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, I Jameson. like him. Did you say what your name was? What did I Jameson. Mention? No, the mouth. Uh, the rat. The rat. <laughs> is uh, uh, rusty. rusty. It was Rusty. Okay, I just want to think. Rusty the mouse. <laughs> the, the definitely. Uh, okay. Um, and, I don't take uh, offense. It's okay. I, can uh, I like try? Can I introduce myself to Rusty and try and shake his hand? Yeah, like, sure. With a little, with like a little pinch. I just, I run up as if it's like completely normal and I just like shake your finger with both my oh, nice paws. To, nice to meet you, Rusty. Um, I'm Chance. Wait, nice what year you. are we in? Can I, I, like, I like um, gently pat him on the head because I'm used to pets. <laughs> it's like 202X. Like, into it a little bit, you know? um, it, it's 2020X. I don't really want to say like out. Mega Man years. What, what did you say, Fu? So I'll be like, Oh my gosh, this is like a real life Ratatouille. Uh, yeah, Ratatouille's canon. Like any any media that is canon, save like Twitch and speedrunning, obviously, because that's what would we even do? Um, but, but like like Pixar, you know, like common pop culture shit is canon uh, in this campaign. Um, gosh, everybody, I'm having a great adventure, but I sure do wish I was home watching twitch.tv slash adef. <laughs> what a strange world we find ourselves in. Um, is there <laughs> oh, that's anything... me on the screen. Is there any kind of remarkable visual qualities about Rusty? Like anything that's uh, remarkable? Rusty, like, Rusty has a an undetermined jacket, uh, <laughs> and uh, Rusty is like a bluish light gray sort of fur coat with like a tear in his left ear, and he's got like very kind looking, almost human eyes. Um, and uh, we're letting the character artist. Oh yeah, there's character art coming by the way uh, for all of the players to have in their little player squares. Uh, a good friend of mine here in Los Angeles is drawing them um and uh i'm uh dangerous and i have decided to give him the license on what uh rusty is wearing that's right um okay so there, there are clothes definitely distinguished like a jacket rat. a jacket it's not like yeah nor, okay um and uh jameson says all right i'll <laughs> i'll give answers before mr italiano here gets upset I believe his name is Polly. Way too late. Oh. They call him Meatball. I pat him on the yeah, head. Yeah, I resent that. My name is Lasagna. Oh, classic <laughs> Meatball. Elbow him in the shoulder. It's really early to get some latent Italian racism from me and Patrick. <laughs> Real early. <laughs> um, uh, excellent. Uh, so Jameson says... Uh, Are there any other chairs in the room, by the way? Uh, yeah, there are some chairs you could go unfold and put down to like sit in a circle. I'm gonna just sit, yeah, just sit it so she can face him. Cause... Sure. I'm gonna uh, back James... off. Okay. The shadows and lean against the wall. Polly, Mamba, Rusty, what about you guys? I'm standing up. I'm at the ready. Yeah, pretty much. Well, is, is there anything like in the surrounding area, like tables or? Anything like in this place, like it's like barren. Or barren. It's barren. Okay. Except I'm for the bored. doors against the wall. Interesting. My character uh, Rusty. Bored. Yeah. Well, hopefully soon he <laughs> won't be. Rusty, what about you? What's your what's your game plan? Dangers. Uh, what is what is my plan? Oh, I just yeah. go back to Jameson and I okay. do the I do the stuff spiral scary, sure. staircase up to his shoulder again. Excellent. You plop down. Yeah. And Jameson right. says. Uh, Jameson says. 
Riley and his guys know your faces now, so... <clears throat> You know, you're not safe whether I tell you what I'm about to tell you or not. Uh, right. But I sh should probably ask that everybody does want to know, because knowing what I'm about to tell you will put you in pretty imminent uh, danger. So, <clears throat> Lexi's going to say, excuse me, for note-taking purposes, and get out her phone so she can take notes. Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody want to excuse themselves? I'm just in the darkness eating cookie crumbs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> he says, I'll take the silence as a yes. And he puts out the cigar and puts it in a, a breast pocket in his dress shirt. And he says, uh, before I go in really into detail and you just see Ryan go or Justin goes, oh, no, because I just have to know you're trustworthy. We'll help protect you no matter what. The three of us are, we're in for that. But whether or not I bring you into the fold and give you the tools to defend yourself depends on how you answer the following question. There are four of them. Answer wisely. Or four of you, sorry. So you got um, Rusty, Jameson, Ryan, and Justin? Uh, yes, uh, Rusty, Jameson, Ryan, and Justin, yeah. Okay, sorry. It just was clear. Um, and he says, uh, he says, or Justin goes, oh God, the personality question. <laughs> and Jameson says, shut up, Justin, it works. Sorry about Ikari, he's uh, <clears throat> just a kid. All right, I'm gonna ask you one question each and depending on your answers, I'll make my decision, got it? Here we go. And he looks first at Polly and he says, what to you consists of fulfilling life? Uh, family. And that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Mamba, same question. <sighs> Some damn peace and quiet. Lexi? You, mm. Usually I'm more prepared for a test. <laughs> Demonstrate power responsibly. And chance? I'm just trying to make ends meet till I figure that out. Very well. The brink. <clears throat> and he leans back and he says, the Brink is a mysterious power that flows through all living things, but there are only certain people who are actually privy to it, who are what we call Brink sensitive. And then there are an even smaller group of people that are able to harness that ability. We call them Brink users. <clears throat> Which one of those you are, I don't know yet. But the fact that you were present in New York too means that you're definitely at least Brink sensitive. Sounds like some uh... kind of drug. It's not. What do you mean by New York, too? Uh, well, what do you mean by sensitive? <laughs> well, it just means that you can detect the brink, you know, uh, in some way, feel it. Um, yeah, New so, York, too, is our code word uh, for it, or code phrase, I guess. Uh, you met Riley. Uh, he's the guy with the, the fancy mask and probably a suit. Dude's a total fucking asshole. Um, <clears throat> uh, that's his. Do you have suits ability. like that, by the way? Do I have suits? Yeah, I mean, I got can some I, nice suits. Can I have them? Uh, no. Are we currently still in New York too? Uh, no. Where, did you see? Did you see uh, pedestrians on your way in? Yeah, we saw then them no. from the air. Yeah, then no. It's when been did too we, long, and plus we. we uh, you flew in the helicopter. From right across the river where New York 2 is? All right, so uh, people who can use their brink will often have a brink, well, almost always have a brink ability. This is latent to who they are. Your brink ability is determined at birth. It's just part of your personality. And uh, How can Riley's one determine brink. what that is? Rigorous testing, we can do that, assuming you make the cut. What kind of testing? We'll get there. 
Riley's brink ability is called Facade's Doorman. It allows him to... Uh, what's my description? I wrote down a better way to do this. Uh, yeah, that ability you faced where it seemed like all bring, non-brink sensitive people disappeared. Uh, yeah, that's Riley's brink. That's Facade's Doorman. He can create an exact copy of a place within a certain radius around him, and it's layered directly on top of the real one. So all the, like, inanimate objects are brought in as exact copies, and anyone who's brink-sensitive is moved from the first location into the second layered one. So they're gone in New York 1. And uh, sometimes animals will be brought in, sometimes not. Uh, yes, Lexi in the front. Uh, so did we then disappear from the play with everybody else, and that's still occurring? Yeah, they're all still there just watching the show. And people just disappeared in front of them. Yeah, I don't know if they saw it or not. Maybe they thought it was crazy. I couldn't tell you. So just to be clear, everybody who was there is okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all that matters. Sod's doorman, you can only injure people that are brought in. And we are back outside of that realm. Yeah, he no. either he either dispelled it or we went far enough. It's hard to know. There are a lot of things we don't know about Facade's Doorman. I haven't worked with Riley in a really long time. She's going to get a message and then probably ignore it. Um, so why did he want to kill us? Or why did he want to well, kill Well, he wanted them? to kill Ryan. Uh, well, me and Ryan and Justin. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this this uh, this brings us to the eight, and he unbuttons his shirt sleeve on his left, and he rolls it up and shows you a tattoo uh, that says uh, number six. It's a big number six on his left arm, and he throws it back down and buttons it, and he says, "Almost eight years ago to the day, a man named Stephen assembled eight promising strangers from across the globe to." Uh, train them in the brink we trained in Italy for two years and then two of us numbers seven and eight that'd be Gillian and Riley respectively betrayed us I believe you know Riley's the guy you met earlier albeit briefly the ensuing clash between us uh, which was the six of us and Stephen and Dominic, who's our teacher. And I guess Alessandro was there too. It was a bloodbath. Riley and Gillian were kind of like the strongest of us. It's a damn shame. How did this Steven guy come upon this knowledge to pass it on to you in the first place? I don't think that's really my story to tell. So then how can we find something like that out? I can teach you, but my story continues. You the kind eight. of paused as if you wanted us to speak, so that's why we interjected. I paused because yeah, several of my closest friends died that day. Uh oh. Sorry for your loss. Yeah, me too. The eight as a group ended that day, obviously. Those of us who were left, who have gone our separate ways, some of us have stayed in touch, some not. Gillian was killed, but Riley persists, obviously. For some reason, now, six years later, he's back out of hiding and has assembled a massive amount of sympathizers in the last six years during his time away. And we fear that he's got something brewing, given that he is hunting down known Brink users. What do you mean sympathizers? Uh, complete fucking whack jobs who are easily assuaded to that kind of point of view. You know why Riley has turned against everyone or like whatever his motivation there are ways to negatively use the brink Riley and Gillian were in search of that I really can't say much more at this time so what about this guy point to his shoulder I wave uh <clears throat> no offense he's no a rat offense. yeah no offense little one but you're not exactly a common occurrence here I've seen a lot of rats in my time Oh, they don't talk to you? I get a picture uh, of them. Not usually, no. They probably try. Uh, so what makes you succeed where they don't? That's where the bring sensitivity comes in, baby. <laughs> he called you baby. A rat. a rat called you baby. <laughs> Rusty, have you always been a rat? 
Oh, yeah. I remember my time before all this crazy brink stuff happened. Um, as part of my uh, service to this organization, they took refuge, all of my family, all 487 of them. <laughs> That's a rat joke. I don't expect you to get that. I think I get it. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I look back to Jameson. He says, uh, yeah, we... Uh, <clears throat> We were looking for Brink users and we just kind of happened upon, we, we were, you know, doing some testing on various animals, curious if uh, animals could use the Brink, and we found this guy's Brink sensitive, and we sort of gave him some Brink energy to work with, one of our scientists did, and uh, he gained the ability to speak, but only to Brink sensitive people. And you know, So if other people see us talking to you, they're going to think we're crazy? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Great. No, Did you have to like learn how to speak English, or it just comes out like English to us? This, these experiments have just brought it upon me, and now I can do it. Sorry, did you say that you have Brink energy to give, and we can have that? Oh, me? No, it's not for no, you. No, not you, Rusty. James, yeah. sorry, yeah, Rusty. We'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll get there. Oh, okay. Are like now, or like later? Are you more to people? What was that? Good chance. Are you more polite to animals than you are to people? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, Jameson says, uh, all right, that's enough talk. Uh, I'll take you to headquarters. Let's go. Uh, and he stands up and Ryan opens the garage. Uh, and, uh, Justin and Ryan walk out and Justin's like, not back into the rain. Uh, and they walk out and Jameson walks forward and he's like, come on. To the to the fort. Shouldn't we be contacting families or? You know? I wouldn't use a I wouldn't use a phone. I don't have family. Somebody have like hacking on this sympathizer team. Right, that's what I'm saying. We don't know. I'm gonna get you to a secure location and then you can contact your family. How much time has passed since the show started? Um, would it be over by now? Maybe an hour. They're probably in like intermission or something. Okay. Um, and uh, they just start walking, uh, and assume that you will follow. Mm -hmm. Is there an umbrella we can use? Uh, Jameson's like, yeah, you can have mine, and he pulls an umbrella off the wall and throws it to you, Lexi. Thank you. And he says, anybody else want anything? So walk. Just... She's intrigued enough by this so that she'll go. Um, and as Wait, you all do you walk, have another umbrella? No. I just was asking out of courtesy. There's nothing else to give. Um, and as you walk through, now it's sort of just lightly raining. Um, and uh, you walk for about two blocks, sort of weaving in and out of alleyways. And ultimately you happen upon, there's like this skyscraper and there's big words on top of the skyscraper that read Infernitech. I-N-F-E-R-N-I-T-E-C-H, Infernitech. Well, we have heard of this company before, whatever it yes. is before. Yes, Infernitech is sort of like a, uh, <clears throat> it's like an electronics company. Um, they sort of do like general electronics work. Um, uh, it's uh, the two like main electronics superpowers in New York City are, uh, Hargrove Electrics and uh, uh, Infernitech. And these two organizations are like uh, kind of competitors, but Infernitech's kind of like the up and comer. Um, they don't do exactly the same stuff. Like uh, Hargrove is kind of more like GE, whereas Infernitech is kind of more like uh, business use and uh, industrial stuff. Um, and uh, Jameson. Uh, takes you down a back alley and there's like this convenience store that's like decrepit and closed and he uh uses a key and unlocks the convenience store door that's next to the skyscraper and opens it and says uh all right everybody in to the infernitech skyscraper and into this like convenience store next to the infernitech oh, skyscraper okay. all right. convenience store i'm in like instantly almost almost excitedly i go in uh, when you walk in, what was that? Sorry, Lexi. So maybe they have a towel or something. <laughs> uh, when you walk in, the shelves are barren. It looks like it's, oh. it's, it's like it's been closed a long time. Uh, or maybe it's supposed to look that way. 
because Jameson walks over to the wall once everybody's in and the door is closed and uh, uh, Ryan locks it. And Jameson pulls a lever behind a cabinet and the the whole building, like the interior, the floor starts to sink down. Um, and, and, you know, Rusty's just chilling. This is... So, so the whole floor the is like an elevator. Yeah, this. everything attached to it is a, like a complete facade. Like, Do you see any of the parts and pieces moving? Like, is the... The yeah, there's like long chains and, and gears mechanisms that are like right, pulling let's it down. Just and go up. over and inspect all that and be like, interesting, and start taking notes. And it's very cool. Yeah. I'm just yeah. looking desperately for anything that might be left on any of the shelves. Uh, like putting my head like in between shelves. And you find a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Same pocket I, as the, the chips. I chips hear the crinkling and I, I go ask him for one. What are you talking about? <laughs> I I just heard a bag of chips. I know that sound anywhere. No, there's I get one. <laughs> I wish there was a bag of chips. Do you want Dude, some? I, do you want some cookies? I can see I the bulge in your trench coat. I can see. It. I reach I in my trench coat cookies. and crinkle the bag of chips to get around it to get cookie crumbs and offer them to you. I guess she's too you can have some cookies. That's all I got. Um. So Jameson's still in the front, right? Um. He just sort of, yeah, he just pulled the lever and he's just kind of standing there. Lexi's going to walk over and be like, do you know about, do, were you involved in making this work or do you know who, who built this contraption? That's my guys. Okay, I would love to speak to them. I mean, they're probably doing some other construction around the city somewhere, if I had to guess. All right, we can stay in touch, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the elevator settles down and it feels like you've been going down for like five or ten minutes and then oh, it like settles into place and Jameson opens a door for you uh, and uh, as you walk through you're in a, like a, a high tech science lab um, you're in like oh. a full on lab there are like doctors and scientists in lab coats doing notes doing little experiments on various like liquids and you know classic uh, you've seen CSI um, this is some science room bullshit like you know whatever you think is in there is probably in there is this uh, a hospital uh, land dude Lexi is into it <laughs> what do you just, say like, waving uh, at anybody who gives us attention yeah they're all waving back they're like what's up Rusty <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> um, uh, Polly what did you say that is this the hospital? Uh, James is like, no. Nah. <laughs> is this the Umbrella um, Corporation? Just go look at Polly. I love this. Have you ever been in a hospital before? Yeah, it looks just like this. <laughs> kind of. Um, While they're all asking questions, I take a pen off the desk. <laughs> um, uh, no one notices. <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, you walk for a while and then there's this sort of uh, young looking scientist with uh, long curly blonde hair that's tied into a pony that sort of goes into the na like the the middle of her back. And she's got these big like owl glasses and she looks a little like all over the place, but uh, very fun. Um, and she looks over, she's like, hey, Rusty. Uh, and this Hi. is uh, this is Dr. Sam. This is uh, uh, Dr. Samantha. Uh, Rusty. Yes. Um, and she says, hey, everybody, uh, you're the new guys. Huh? Hi, um, uh, I, I'm Dr. Loretto. Uh, you, you can call me Dr. Sam. That's what my friends call me, if, if you want. Dr. Sam is pretty cool. Nice to meet you, I'm Lexi. Why are you and... a doctor here if it's not a hospital? <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny joke. That's a funny one. That's funny. No, he's genuinely confused. No, I know, and she <laughs> thinks it's a joke. Oh, good. <laughs> she's, she's like that's funny what's your name uh Paulie what do you do here <laughs> uh I treat the patients <laughs> uh no no I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a research I'm the assistant research scientist uh to Dr. Rell so I put my arm around Polly and just here have some cookies I, I attempt to shove my hand into his pocket to grab the Doritos. No! <laughs> <laughs> like, pipe down on you too. Polly, okay, you know, Rusty can do his thing because of people like Dr. Sam here. Does that make more sense? So she like operated on him to make him smart? Kind, it seems kind of like that. 
Why don't we uh, learn more? Dr. Sam's like, uh, not exactly, but uh, let me introduce you to Dr. Rel. Uh, she yeah. probably will have some insight. Um, and this very stately looking woman in like a blue turtleneck under her white lab coat uh, and long brunette straight hair uh, comes over and she wears very thin glasses and she says, uh, hello, my name is Dr. Rel. Uh, it's very nice to meet all of you. Um, and uh, she says, uh, she says, Jameson, these are the uh, the folks. And he goes, uh, yeah. He goes, uh, you listen to Dr. Rel. Uh, I'm going to sit in the corner and uh, <clears throat> not smoke my cigar. Because apparently I'm not allowed to do that in here. So, yeah, they got oxygen tanks. Those explode. And he's like, but you can whatever. You have and an extra he, cigar. Uh, and he's yeah. like, sure. Uh, and he pulls a nice like Cuban case out of his uh, jacket pocket and flips it open and hands you one. Uh, and it's pre-cut. And he uh, he's about to light it up for you. And she's like, please stop. <laughs> and he's like, whatever, later. Lexi will then reach out again. Thanks so much, um, Dr. Rell. She's like, I don't really do handshakes, sorry. No problem. Um, and she says, uh, she says, well, I suppose we'll start with, uh, well, welcome to B Division. Samantha, can you do this? And Samantha's like, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, guys, hey, <laughs> uh, this is B Division. Uh, this is a, a top secret uh, part of Infernatech. Uh, so welcome to Infernatech headquarters, B Division. Uh, we're, we're, we're about 20 or 30 uh, like floors uh, under the ground. Um, and uh, B Division is pretty top secret, so uh, verbal NDA, <laughs> please don't uh, talk about it with anybody, because um, your life will be in Im immediate danger. Um, uh, we research the brink here. That's what the B stands for. Uh, and uh, we like to joke it stands for other things, but that's a joke. Um, uh, it stands for brink. This is the brink division. And uh, we sort of just do pretty much uh, anything to do with the brink. We research it, try to understand it better. Um, uh, we're pretty new. Only the last couple of years have we really been doing big research stuff. So, uh, And Infernatech, uh, Jameson, uh, funds our work. So, Interesting. How long have you been with Infernatech? I started interning in Infernatech when I was still at NYU, so that was eight years ago, but B Division wasn't established until like four years ago. Okay. What exactly are you trying to learn? Um, Who are you asking? I was, uh, I was asking Samantha. Uh, we're... we're uh, you know, we just want to understand everything about the brink. Where does it come from? Uh, uh, you know, how do how is it that some people are able to control it? Uh, uh, you know, things like that. I'm looking at the Cuban, nice Cuban cigar that I was given, realizing got... how much it's worth, and yeah. then thinking about what Sam just said, kind of look over my shoulder back at Jameson, and without saying anything, piece together that he's much more important than he seems. Yeah, um, and she goes, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I worked for Jameson for a bit, uh, and he sort of pooled a couple of us together that he trusted in his company to uh, come down here and do B Division. So um, uh, we kind of live down here, to be honest with you. We don't get out much, uh, but we got really all we could need. Uh, we, you know, we all, we all understood the consequences when we took the job. Do you know how many other experimental divisions are here at Infernatech? I cannot tell you that info. Okay. When do we get brink energy? Uh, well, you already have it. Uh, you, it's latent within you. The fact that you were pulled into Facade's door, man, uh, into New York too, <laughs> means that uh, you've got brink energy. Uh, you just don't know how to use it yet. And uh, maybe, Jameson, you know, maybe, and he's like, okay, maybe sometime soon uh, you'll be able to use it. Why don't we talk about the bracelet? Um, and... Uh, you walk over to this like a display case and there is this object in it. It looks like the bracelet that Justin had on that he turned. Um, and it is this like ring. Uh, and uh, now you see that uh, uh, Rusty has a tiny one on his little paw. Um, and uh, it has like a switch in it so you can like turn the bracelet. And she goes, the brink is typically activated via opening uh, wounds in your body. Uh, this uh, we've come to understand is because uh, the endocrine and cardiovascular systems are heavily tied to the movement of brink energy within the body. And so you are releasing pores openings for brink energy to be allowed to escape. And then stating the name of your brink ability typically was the, uh, the early way to activate it. But 
we've also found that you can actually channel your brink energy into objects to make them or yourself more protected or more powerful. Um, and uh, the bracelet is, uh, we found it quite barbaric to have to like slit your hands or anything. Uh, so the bracelet is a way to mitigate that. Uh, the bracelet or, God, what's it stand for? The bracelet or brink reactive arm channeler for endocrine letting and effect transmission uh, is uh, our elegant solution. Uh, uh, first developed by Steven and Alessandro, uh, we have iterated upon the design to make it more compact and lighter. Um, and uh, uh, it opens microscopic pores in your wrist, which is a heavy brink letting area. Uh, and you never have to wound yourself if you don't want to. Uh, and you'll be able to channel your brink just fine. Can I try it? No. Why not? Uh, I've been told, uh, Jameson, and Jameson stands up and pipes up. He's like, not yet, guys. Uh, I kind of want to put you on like a little bit of a trial basis to find out just who we're dealing with before I give you the tools, because if you use the bracelet too soon, you could actually kill yourself. I'm trying to take the bracelet very slyly. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Rel slaps your hand, uh, who's the like sort of straight laced doctor. Uh, repeat the acronym. Sure thing. Uh, the bracelet, B-R-A-C-E-L-E-T, or Brink Reactive Arm Channeler for Endocrine Letting and Effect Transmission, uh, is, uh, is, is the device. Um, I think just gonna just kind of squat down and look at it. It's, it's really cool looking. It's got these, like, openings in the center on, like, the inner ring, um, and it's very neat. Uh, and, um... They say, uh, the, the, the two of them, the doctors, the two scientists, uh, what's next? Um, they say, also, is everybody good to go for like 40 more minutes, 30 yeah. to 40 more minutes? Yeah, I'm good. Sweet. Um, that'll put us about three hours and change, I think. <clears throat> um, so, uh, that is correct, Hawkwing. Nice work. Uh, Jameson's like, cool, I'm just going to jump in with why we brought you here. Uh, <clears throat> so we obviously have to protect you because now that Riley knows that you're Brink users, he's seen your face, you know, and all his guys have seen it. Uh, you're not safe. Um, so I'm going to... Why don't you stay here tonight? And uh, we'll run some rudimentary tests, nothing invasive, uh, just to find out about your Brink levels to see if you'll be able to defend yourselves. And so we won't have to protect you, and then we can sort of let you on your way. Because if I let you out on the streets of New York right now, there's no telling. You have rooms for us to stay in? Yeah. Can I have we my have own whole, room? Our, I was planning on... Yeah. I was not going to put you in a room with uh, uh, three 30-year-old men, if that's what you're asking. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no. We, I mean, we have whole complexes down here because, uh, you know, the B Division people don't really get to leave much, so I try to make it hospitable for them down here. Makes sense. You can stay with my 400 sisters. That's a rat joke. I don't expect you to. This <laughs> guy, yeah, a lot of so, guys. Rusty, quick question: Are, Do you stay sanitary? Like, what's? Hey, well, they, she's that's not rude. She I find that very really insensitive. Watching. You think rats are dirty? You're like, look, all I know is about them traveling around the city. So I just, you know, like she looks like she really wants to pet him, but she's trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we just try to make it around the city the same as you. That's fair. Jameson's like, you ever look at the bottom of your shoes after you walk around in New York? It's just how it is. That's why you have on shoes. Yeah, well, yeah, we, he doesn't want to wear shoes. We don't have that luxury. He's just a guy. You just leave him be. <laughs> just like face <laughs> on his jacket. Hmm. How is there right a guy? Right like shoes. <laughs> um, so, I. Uh, you're also, you all feel like for some reason physically and mentally exhausted, not just from the events, but also like whatever went on must have been Justin's brink or whatever, like that felt bad. Uh, not to mention you climbed a skyscraper. Um, and you went into the show at like seven, it's an evening show. So it's now like 9 p.m. by the time you're here and learn all this stuff. So he offers you a dinner and to go to sleep in your rooms after some like blood is drawn from each of you, just some, a very, uh, like one vial of blood is drawn from each of you. Um, do any of you have any issue with that? Can I ask how dinner is being served? Uh, it's just like a cafeteria. Um, and uh, tonight on the menu is uh, fried chicken and a nice Caesar salad and some mashed potatoes. Okay, I guess 
going to school, she would. I'm just wondering about how their school does food. <laughs> the cafeteria, one presumes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fine. Um, I'm going to check my phone. Do I have any service down here? No. And uh, she goes, uh, Samantha's like, when you guys are sitting down eating and you check your phone, she goes, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, Yeah, the whole place is a Faraday cage, actually. And I go upstairs. And I got I to gotta text my siblings, let them know I'm okay. I was watching them at a play, and all of a sudden I wasn't there. They're going to be worried. My whole family's going to be worried. Uh, we've actually sent representatives uh, to each of your, uh, uh, well, for those of you who had family that we could find, we sent representatives uh, to tell them that you're okay. That's not going to be weird for them. Uh, we have ways. I'm already walking away to my room to go to bed. <laughs> is this the Dr. Sam who's saying this? Yeah. Okay. It's also just a funny picture to me, like, these three tall dudes, a rat, this female scientist and this 13 year old girl are sitting at like a cafeteria table eating dinner together. <laughs> it's a very funny uh, uh, thing to me. Um, uh, and uh, let's as, as the rest of you go to sleep, um, we're going to cut to uh, Rusty and Jameson and Sam. Um, so it's just the rest of you're talking with the two of them. And Jameson's like, well, the both of you, what do you think of our uh, candidates i guess as it were quite the motley crew i was thinking the same doesn't seem like they like to talk much but that's no. new york for you yeah uh, and samantha says uh it's kind of amazing that there were four of them in one theater i mean like i know dr rell's hypothesis is that brink users just kind of coagulate for lack of a better word, just by happenstance, but four who didn't know about the brink, but we're all brink sensitive in one place. And Jameson says it is strange, but not unheard of. I, mean, I don't know. Like, what's the probability that any given individual is brink sensitive? She's like, well, we don't really have that data yet. He's like, OK. More testing. Rusty. Floor. Yeah, exactly. Rusty, are you comfortable working with them? I'd be willing to give them a shot. I feel like it could be nice to have somebody that's a little more acquainted with things. I think I'm going to send them on a uh, <clears throat> sort of trial run with Justin, um, if you're interested. Count me in. Excellent. Um, uh, right, well, I'm going to head to bed. Uh, Sam, are you comfortable doing a little overtime to get the uh, information from their blood tonight before you go to sleep? She's like, yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> I don't have very, very many friends, so, you know, I'm basically just going to do this. Um, and Jameson's like, huh. Uh, and then Jameson's like, cool, uh, I'm going to go up to my office, uh, get some work done. Uh, you guys take care. Sure thing. See you around. And we'll uh, cut to the next morning. Um, and... Uh, so we'll have all of you together and you're all sort of roused in the morning and, and brought to this central uh, meeting room, for lack of a better word. You're in like a, a you know, just sort of a, a conference room, sitting in chairs, waiting, uh, swiveling about. Is there um, like a laundry place to do laundry? <laughs> uh, maybe, but you don't have a change of clothes. You're just here for the one night. Yeah. Um, and uh, you all feel kind of gross. Like you could take a shower in your rooms, but you just get back into the same clothes, um, which is not optimal. Um, and, uh, that, yeah. it's like eight or nine in the morning and breakfast is brought to you. Uh, there's like fruits and bagels and eggs and bacon, um, and a lot of fruit and like assorted breakfast items. And then, uh, Jameson comes in with Dr. Samantha and he's like, cool. Uh, well, <clears throat> I've got some bad news and some good news. Which you want first? Let's get the bad news. All right, pocket news. cream cheese knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bad news. Uh, <clears throat> there's this guy, uh, and uh, you're all aware of this, by the way. Um, there's been a serial killer going around New York. Um, it, it's sort of been in the news over the last six months, kind of acting sporadically, but they think all the killings are linked, and it's all kind of like 20 somethings young women that are being targeted. Uh, and they think it's one guy. Um, you're all sort of aware of this. He goes, uh, you know the uh, New York slasher that's been on the news? Yeah, it's not me. 
didn't say that it was. Uh, I was just yeah, saying. We, we think he's a Brink user. Um, and we think he's recently been recruited by Riley because uh, he's recently switched targets uh, and is now basically just targeting any Brink users. And the only way he'd have that information is if he's working with Riley, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so about 10 minutes ago, a source of ours thinks they spotted a figure that matches the description. We don't, we've never seen his face. We don't know what he looks like. We just know kind of his height and build. Um, and uh, he was seen near the 96th Street A and C stations. We don't think he's terribly powerful. He's just kind of sly. Uh, we're going to send Justin out after him, and we kind of want to send you guys as like a uh, a trial run with him. So we want you to kind of observe Justin, let him teach you about things. Rusty will go too. Uh, and uh, learn about the brink if you can. Maybe catch this guy. Uh, we're not taking you out unarmed, though. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, we'll take you to the weapons division uh, before you leave. While this conversation is going on, I just like kind of casually run across the table with a piece of cheese and I give it to Chance to see what happens. I take it, pat him on the head, whisper, thanks, little guy, and put it in my pocket. <laughs> and then I just scurry back over to my plate. Um, and uh, Jameson says, uh, everybody cool? Uh, so just to confirm here, you're sending us a bunch of random people who you just met to go after some super-powered wizard serial killer who has been murdering people just like us in secret for the past few months as a trial run? What well, are we trying? Started, he only started killing people like you, like, last week. Uh-huh. Yes, but he successfully killed people. Yeah, but are you ready for the good news? Okay. I guess. Uh, Dr. Samantha, please. And she's like, hey, guys, uh, did the testing. Uh, the results are in. Uh, you all uh, have the potential to harness the brink. Uh, it's really yeah, exciting. I, I just clap. I'm like, right up. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> um, bracelet, please. Uh, she says, not quite yet. Um, we want you to get a taste of what it's like to be in brink combat first, uh, because if you turn the bracelet too soon, uh, it, will, it will kill you. Uh, releasing that much brink energy all at once is very dangerous. So how are we supposed to defend ourselves then in the meantime? Uh, we have developed here at the B Division uh, weapons which uh, innately channel your Brink energy and will be able to protect you. Um, and uh, Justin will be there, and Justin's like our number one guy. So. Can we have the bracelet now? No, that's what I'm saying. You can't. You can't have it. Oh. Okay. Uh, can we go check out these weapons then? Yeah, I mean, Jameson, it's up to you. And he's like, yeah, uh, you're going to leave in 20 minutes. Uh, so go check out the weapons division uh, and uh, pick something that works for you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's it. Uh, break, uh, meet, meet Justin at the entrance in, uh, yeah, 20 minutes. Okay. Do we get led toward the weapons area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Samantha takes you there. Um, and let's go, let's switch to the daytime playlist. There we go. Um, excellent. Uh, so you go to, I say, ex have you noticed this? I noticed this. When I am DMing, I say excellent all the time. I Amazing. don't know why. I say it like anytime I'm like in a bridge into a new thought, I'm like, excellent. I just, I notice it when I'm doing this and only this. Um, well, now I okay. do. We need I, an I almost command just... for the chat to like keep track for you. I'll add it. I'll add it before next episode. <laughs> we have one for hello, which I say on accident all the time. Um, just like, hello? Uh, so, uh, you go to the, the weapons place, and I have a list, but I kind of want the guy there to just give the, you the one he thinks is best for you. Um, uh, because you're usually supposed to purchase with, like, credit, um, the weapons, but you're, you're getting, like, one for free. Um, and you don't have the full gamut open to you. So you walk up, and there's this guy, this burly dude, uh, this huge dude in a tank top, massive muscles, tattoos up the arms. Uh, he's got a nice mustache, very, you know, squinted eyes. He's bald. And he goes, uh, What's up, guys? My name's Harley. It's nice to meet all you guys. Uh, Harley, I'm Chance. 
Hey, what's up, Chance? Nice to meet you. And I clamber um, up the counter and like hold my fist out for a fist bump. He's like, my man. Yeah. <laughs> Rusty, bro. Yo, this guy is nuts. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I've been instructed to give you guys a weapon. Uh, it's going to be dealer's choice, I'm afraid. I can't give you the full arsenal. They don't trust you with firearms quite yet. So, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I'd like to just get like look up and down, everybody. Okay, great. She's gonna uh, have goes, her um, out, by the way, because she's interested in seeing if she can outfit him with anything. Sure. I start turning, kind of like showing off my figure, <laughs> my coat. Um, he goes back like Ollivander in like <laughs> Ollivander's wand shop. He's like, oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> he pulls something out, and he walks back and he hands uh, he hands Polly a pair of brass knuckles, uh, and he's like, these are for you, my man. All right. I can't say I've ever used them before, but... Uh, you just swing. All right, I slip them on my fingers. Uh, for you, Polly, that is... Uh, it's going to be plus strength and proficiency. Um, assuming... Uh, these are simple melee weapons. So if you're proficient in simple melee weapons, uh, you will have proficiency on these rolls. Yep. Uh, so this is uh, d20 plus sh uh, strength. They're all plus strength. They're melee weapons. Uh, plus strength plus proficiency for you, Polly. And... Uh, you can uh, innately multi-attack with them, a 1-2, uh, and it's 1d4 plus strength for each. Okay, is it uh, blunt damage, piercing? Bludgeoning. Bludgeoning. Uh, to you, Mamba, he hands a machete, uh, and he, he sort of flips it in his hand so that he's holding the blunt edge of the blade, and he hands it to you to take the handle. And Mamba, this is uh, D20 plus uh, strength plus proficiency if you have it. And then it's 1D8 plus strength slashing. Uh, and to you, um, Chance, he hands... Hmm... Oh. He hands Sitting you a, here, like doing this with my hands. He hands you a meat cleaver, <laughs> and he's like, "I feel like this is you." When I when I go to grab it, does he have any like jewelry on that I can slyly try and take with it? Uh, he's uh, got a uh, he's got a a, a a a a chain link bracelet around his okay. right hand. When when he hands it to me, I go, "You know, you really get me. You really understand me. Like just." Just in the moment, you you did so well, and I'm Thank like you. trying to very carefully take the chain link around uh, roll, his wrist. Roll sleight of hand. Oh, this song slaps, by the way. <laughs> that would be a uh, eight. Uh, you reach around his wrist to like grab it, and he plants his hand, thinking that it's like a two hands, two hands thing and he's like thank you man i appreciate that so, yeah of course and i appreciate you thank you so much and i take the meat cleaver uh the meat cleaver is d20 plus strength plus proficiency if you have it um and uh it is uh 1d6 plus strength slashing can you repeat all that 1d6 plus strength slashing for damage and then for the attack roll, it's a d20 plus strength. And then uh, if you are proficient in simple melee weapons, then you add your proficiency bonus. OK. Um, and then uh, Rusty, I would say you already obviously will have something. Um, we'll say that you have a pocket knife that you like hold up. Uh, <laughs> and the pocket knife is uh, d20 plus strength plus proficiency if you have it. Um, and is that a simple uh, weapon? Yes. Uh, it is 1d4 piercing plus strength. Is this a human-sized pocket knife? Yeah, so it's like a huge knife for... or I, It's actually a little bit smaller. It's shrunk down. It's made special. Uh, like so it's something Swiss that... It's some, he could hold it under... Yeah, like a tiny Swiss Army pocket knife that yeah. Rusty could hold under both hands if if standing up. Good one to get. Yeah. Um, oh, what is this, Danny? saw this this morning. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. 
LOL. Skip skip to like 25 seconds though. <laughs> um and uh Oh yes. I almost said Alencia. That'll happen Hi. a couple times. Um uh, uh Lexi. Lexi, he's like you don't strike me as the weapon type, but I can give you something if you want it. I got something for your robot. Neither of us are very strong at the moment. All right. Why don't I give him? Uh, I'll give him the night stick. I'll give him a night stick. Name's Maxwell. All right. Go look over the camp, like. Okay. Um, and uh, he brings you like a night stick for the robot to have, so that it's small and compressible, but can be unfolded and you know whack. Um, okay. And. Uh, Neither of us have any strength. That is. Uh, D20, for the robot's sake, since it's, the strength is so bad, we'll do plus dex. Um, and we'll we'll add a proficiency bonus of plus one just for the attacking bonus for the robot. And we'll say 1d6 uh, plus dex for damage. And he's not going to hand you... Uh, he give you, he'll give you a stun gun. Uh, <laughs> Lexi. Yeah, he'll give you a little a little taser. Uh, like the handheld kind where you have to be up, in, up close and personal. Right. Um, and that is uh, d20 plus strength plus proficiency if you have it to hit and plus 1d4 strength? yeah and 1d4 lightning damage uh, plus strength if the strength is a negative modifier it is absolutely a negative modifier then we'll do a blanket plus one on the damage okay <laughs> oh good to so know strength plus proficiency to hit to hit you will take the negative yeah. uh, to hit you'll take the negative but on damage if your strength is negative we'll just take a blanket plus one so they told us that these weapons would help us with our brink somehow. We're supposed to channel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, when you use the weapon, you'll feel it. Uh, but in the heat of battle, I, I promise. Okay. I attempt, to, I attempt to punch the wall with my brass knuckles. Uh, you just punch the wall. Nothing happens. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah, you get that um, mean wall meatball. I ain't feel nothing. Yeah, it's uh, in the brink battle. You gotta, you'll see. Justin will teach you. Ikari's a good kid. You listen to him, right, Rusty? Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, he's a good kid. Good fashion sense. I don't know anything about that, but it seems that way. I feel say thank you for the help. Yeah, no problem, little girl. Anything. I mean, uh, like I'm just, you know, I'm just a fucking guy. You know what I mean? Pardon my French. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys take care. Uh, and you go out and meet Justin. Um, <laughs> Lexi gets an antimatter rifle, 68 necrotic damage. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, you all make it to the, the back where you uh, got in the elevator and you ride up with Justin. Justin's like, Justin is like a completely different person. Uh, he's like, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, Justin. Hey, what's up, Rusty, my man? And he hey, it's the guy that killed someone yesterday. Yeah, that sucked. That sucked. I hate doing that. That sucks. I always feel bad. It's like, you know, but they're going to kill me. So, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, they're bad yeah. dudes. These are bad dudes. Like, I'm not just like killing like normal guys. Like, these are bad dudes. Hey, hey, hey I believe you as long as you don't kill me. Why would I do that? I'm terrified of you. Security, <laughs> what? Security? Here no, what? no, 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 no. Ryan and I are sort of like special task force. Like we go out and like do like the crazy stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, to like get shit done. Ryan's out on some other job right now. I he's not, this is all through Infernatech. I mean, technically. I asked Justin knowing full well how it's going to go, but I say, hey, Justin, how's the weather today? Oh, it is sunny, baby. It is so sunny like outside. The sun is shining and I'm feeling fucking good. OK, uh, yeah, it's good day. Uh, and the elevator reaches its apex and whoosh, locks into place. Uh, and Justin opens the window and is literally basking in the sun. He like spins around. He's like, I fucking love being outside. You seem uh, a little more upbeat than you were yesterday. Yeah, I didn't have a good day yesterday. Okay. It's raining, and I don't like I'm that. I'm telling you, this guy scares me. 
Yeah, he's so. You really, you like, don't get any bad vibes from him, though. Like, I need to emphasize that. Like, he seems no, like he's a kid. Yeah, but I'm, I'm terrified by what he can do and how sure. he acts, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't, and I don't like kids. Oh, <laughs> that's gonna be a problem. It comes um, out. There you go. Uh, and he says, uh, he says, uh, Rusty. All right, we're gonna. Look, we're gonna we're gonna go to this uh, this A and C train station that he was last seen at Ninety uh, Sixth Street, uh, which is on the west side of Central Park. Uh, but we're probably gonna scour the area a little bit, and uh, we should be able to find him. Uh, and if we don't find him, that's okay. Um, and uh, Rusty, I know your brink ability hasn't awoken yet, but you're still able to use the brink, so you're gonna be you know you're my right hand man right now. You're my right hand man. I got you, Justin. And uh, Justin turns around, like, okay, guys, uh, let's go. And he turns around and just starts like skipping. He's skipping down the sidewalk. Um, and uh, Does Inferno he know Tech... we're going to confront a serial killer or what is happening? I don't even know who I'm talking to. I'm just like under my breath, hoping <laughs> someone in the group is like also terrified with me. Mamba, your thoughts? He's no fine. thought. He's, He's fine. fine. I'll, I'll lean over and be, or just like, glance and be like i have messages at the ready for help if needed <laughs> <laughs> i'm skittering um, right behind justin's heels as he's skipping along also i'd like to retcon something um the like garage hideout where you were when you met jameson and rusty was in queens but we'll say that you took the train with jameson to get over to infernatech uh or maybe the helicopter again because infernatech is at uh 57th and 6th in Manhattan. Uh, it's in like Midtown Hell's Kitchen area. Uh, the Google map appears. Uh, 57th and 6th is uh, 24 blocks north of the Empire State Building and one block west. Um, so it's like just before Central Park. Uh, uh, please don't sue me, Google. Thank you. Um, so that's uh, how that works. Well, I think technically you're not supposed it's you have to license use of Google Maps, but that doesn't well, whatever. Um, I don't they have a lot of money and I don't. So hopefully that's fine. Um, excellent. I did it again, bro. Um, excellent. So you walk for a bit. Sun is shining, feeling good. And you make it to the station and Justin's looking around and he's like, why don't you guys wait here? I'm going to go down, check it out. Rusty, stay with them. Uh, I'll be right back. I doubt he'll still be here. He doesn't linger long in places. And Justin, like, slides down the railing, down the stairs, and plops in and sort of looking around. So are we supposed to be doing anything specific? Rusty, you don't really know. <laughs> I'm just like, maybe. <laughs> I just kind of shrug my, my shoulders, yeah. Okay. I, just, I just follow Justin's lead. He's real smart. Are we just um, are we just holding brass knuckles and meat cleavers out like in the open? In New York presumably City you've put them in pockets or something. Uh, one presumes unless you're really nervous, in which case maybe. But that's a bad look. The NYPD are uh, all over train stops, as uh, anyone will tell you. So um, Lexi will put Maxwell kind of on her head again and be like, um, just I'm trying to think of a good a good terminology for like scout mode or something just to like put him on sure he's like scout down. mode yeah, yeah. Alert. she'll be on her phone she's gonna be sending some more messages uh Polly can can Polly and Chance and Mamba please roll perception for me and Rusty all right so everybody except for Lexi oh the robot doesn't <laughs> uh, the robot can roll the robot can roll okay uh, let's get Chance. 18. And Polly? 11. Mamba? 7. And Rusty? 11. And what's the robot? Uh, 12. Uh, who was the highest? Who was Chance, right? Chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the DC on this was 15 or 16, so we'll say Chance. Um, Chance, you feel like you see, every once in a while, a pedestrian, mostly young people, um, in their <laughs> teens and 20s. Uh, kind of like notice Lexi, um, and they're like, and then it's, it's not really a big thing, but they're like, you feel like they might notice her because of the robot on her head, or 
Maybe. You don't know. Well, I notice it, but I don't understand kids. I don't, I don't really. <laughs> it doesn't really fade me. It's kind of weird. Sure. Like, maybe they like the robot because they're young. Whatever. Fair. Um, and with that, Justin comes back up. And he's like, all right, guys. Yeah, he is not here. Um, so you can uh, oh, brink lesson number one. I'm supposed to be like teaching you guys. I think. Dang it. Um, brink lesson number one. Uh, sometimes if high amounts of brink energy are used in an area very recently, you can actually detect trace amounts of brink energy. Uh, so yesterday when those guys were coming at us with guns, that's how Ryan and I knew they were coming because they were lacing their bullets with brink energy. And so uh, we sort of knew where they were uh, within immediate vicinity, like, you know, within like half a block or something. Um, uh, so that's brink lesson number one. <laughs> any questions? Just kidding. Uh, just probably not any questions. Maybe, though. Is there a way for us to start to sense that? I don't know, man. Kind of just happens. So hard to kind of believe that we have this so-called thing besides the fact that we were in a space with nobody else um yeah you don't no. know what it feels like exactly in my Kinda limited like... experience bullets are pretty effective on their own what do they need to make them all brinky for exactly. yeah <laughs> brinky that's funny that's funny polly polly l <laughs> uh my man um, uh, yeah, this is a good one. Um, I think, uh, it's because we as Brink users, we've sort of, we train over time, uh, for the Brink sort of like infused into our clothes, uh, which you'll sort of, you'll, you'll have soon, probably, uh, assuming you survive today, you will, don't worry guys. Um, you know, keep all hands and feet inside the vehicle. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, your Brink clothing can actually protect you, uh, from Brink and non-Brink weapons. Uh, and so more Brink is need to be applied to the weapon to make it more effective. Hence why, uh, the nightstick and stuff, you gotta channel Brink into it to, uh, you know, make it do stuff. Okay, is there a way, then, that we can start to channel this Brink? Please. Once you enter Brink Combat, I'm, I promise it'll, it's like riding a bike. Okay, so just happens in combat to fight things? Can we like... Do I have a bike? Do we get bikes? I want a bike. Oh, I don't know. I had a cool 10-speed a couple of years ago. Do you still have it? Oh, no. Here? No. Close. My house burned down, uh, which was tough. Uh, yeah, my family didn't make it out of that. That was tough. That was a tough one. Bad year. Bad, bad couple of years, I'd say. Uh, but I'm pretty good now. Uh, bike is Without gone. Word, tragic. I just, I just start slowly backing away towards <laughs> the nearest wall, maybe where I, uh... a shadow is, without really even mentioning or making a sound. Just kind of backing away. Ollie gets like really sad at the mention of a house fire, and he goes and puts his hand on the kid's shoulder, and he's like, "I'm sorry for your lost kids." Yeah, I appreciate that. It took a lot of therapy, uh, but you know, I'm in a better place now. Uh, Jameson found me uh, and uh, sort of brought me in and gave me, uh, you know, the funds to go to a good therapist. And, uh, you know, I'm feeling good, guys. I'm in a good place now. And uh, did I mention the sun is shining? So it's a pretty good day. I reached Justin for another fist bump. He's like, oh, pound town, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's like, cool. Uh, so I'm gonna, let's move west. Uh, I doubt he goes into Central Park. It is bumping in CP today, uh, because, uh, it's sunny outside. You know, good day for, like, some, uh, ultimate, or maybe, uh, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, what do you do? Uh, football? <laughs> uh, and let's just go west and, uh, see what we find. I got a good feeling about it. Yeah, let's go. Cheers. And, uh, he's talking about west. Are we on the east or west side right now? You're on the west side. Okay. Uh, 96th Street AC Station is on the west side of Central Park. Yeah, it's on like 8th Avenue or something, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, she's gonna um, Max will be Max is gonna go off her head and just kind of hang out her satchel, but still have an eye out on the side. Okay. Different. Sure. I sidle up um, Mamba, and I'm be like, "Hey, big guy, you want to try to fight me?" We want to see if we can do this brink thing if we get into battle with each other. <laughs> you really think you could take me on? I mean, I'm not trying to win the fight or whatever. I just want I'm to see if we can do the brink like, thing. Un, like, without warning. 
I speed up and get past with... them, even though I was in the back. I hear Can this I conversation, dodge? just kind of start. Uh, yeah, Bobby, roll to hit. Yeah, sure. D20 plus strength. I assume it's not like a full we'll... strength punch. No. We'll do it's 13. That hits. It doesn't. Uh, oh, really? 13 doesn't hit. Okay. Um, so you swing and Polly, you're able to dodge out of the way. I'm like, whoa, buddy, I wasn't trying to start shit with you. I just wanted to see if we could do the magic stuff. Yeah, looked... Plus, breaking out in a fight in Central Park is going to go very well. Justin's like, oh, I'll let them do whatever they want. They're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't something the Central Park hasn't seen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, we're like, you know, we're on the west side, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but guys, this is not going to work. It's got to be, you got to be like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's got to be like somebody else's brink. We'll get there. Right. I pick up a rock off the ground and put it in my pocket. <laughs> you are insane. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you stealing from? Earth? <laughs> it looked shiny. Maybe it was someone's. I don't know. <laughs> Um, excellent. Also, Richard Pog. Richard took extra screenshots of the map. Gamer. Um, <laughs> LOL. Uh, okay. Uh, Justin, uh, basically, um, you guys are walking for a bit, sort of weaving in between streets, kind of like randomly, but you feel like maybe Justin has an idea of what's going on. Rusty feels good about it. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, and I'm going to change the music. Mm, let's go. Uh, all of a sudden, Justin stops and he's like, he's like, oh, do you guys know that this is like that signal in, in movies? Do you guys know that one? It's st stop, stop where you are, Qu quiet. You guys know it? Now, now I do. Okay, cool. What? Uh, I think I saw him. Where? What, do, uh, what does he look like? You're in like an alleyway. Uh, and he's like, I don't know. I just saw a guy from the back that kind of matches, matches the description running. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go get I'm going to go get him. Um, I'm and, scurrying forward in the direction you pointed already. Uh, okay. And Justin uh, grabs his wrist and he's like, no, 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 no. OK. Uh, 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 oh, I'm not a very good leader. Uh, <laughs> he just turns the bracelet and says uh, imminent or is it immediate forecast? I think it's immediate forecast. Um, yeah, he says immediate forecast. And then he says, okay, guys, uh, you probably, well, I don't know. I don't think you should fight him. Uh, um, uh, uh, and then as you, as uh, Justin's brink activates, you see what you thought was like maybe a homeless person in the corner stand up and it's actually a fully armored dude. Um, and uh, Justin assesses him, looks back at you guys, looks at Rusty, assesses him. He's like, you guys can handle this guy. Rusty, you got it. Um, and he says immediate forecast and his brink energy. And you feel this like big wave of energy again, go out and then condense. And then Justin points his hands at the ground and fire comes out of his hands. Ooh. And he flies and rockets past the guy and like skirts past him and then rounds the corner to where he assumes the guy went, the like killer. Um, and uh, I you instinctively did not chuck the rock I picked up at the armored guy, but miss. <laughs> um, and uh, the the guy stands up and he's not holding a uh, or what does he have? Uh, so, yeah, this this guy stands up and he's not holding a gun. He's just got like body armor on and a helmet, very similar to the guys before, but he seems more threatening. Um, and he lifts up his hand to reveal that he also has a bracelet. Uh, shall we? Thick him. <laughs> uh, everybody roll initiative, and this will be the last thing we do tonight. Oh. If, if everybody's got time. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, let's get Rusty. 90. Excellent. Lexi. 13. Chance. 8. 8? Yes, sir. Polly. 7. Mamba. 15. Uh, we start with Rusty. All right. I charge forward. 
um, draw the knife and take a slash at his ankles. Sure. Uh, roll to hit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, five. Uh, you do not hit. You, you and miss. Um, but I think, actually, let's add something to you <clears throat> uh, that I didn't, which is uh, you should be able to disengage as a free action. Okay. Um, because you are a literal rat. Um, and uh, I don't think I don't think people should get an attack of opportunity when you move through their space. All right, very smart. Um, all. When you say draw the knife, how's that work? Yeah, I am curious. <laughs> That's a Do you have question. like a, a holster on your <laughs> your waist? Yeah, or on my back or something. Like a, a, a scabbard, like, like a, a sword. Yeah, like, like a, a sword. sword. I, yeah. yeah, I feel like I don't know. Is it if I two handed? I, I feel like I'd be kind of clumsy on two feet. So maybe I like grab it with my mouth and just like fucking swing like oh, that. Oh, like Sif or not Sif? What's the uh, what's the what's the wolf Patrick or, Bo or Bobby? Sif. It is Sif. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Zation from Pokemon. Sword. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. excellent. Yeah, it's so Pokemon Sword. I just keep running in the same direction and kind of just like turn around. Sure. Uh, and also he's this guy is like 15 feet from all of you, by the way. Um, let's go to Mamba. Yeah, and we use my fast movement to, uh, move behind him, directly behind him. Okay. Can I do that? Sure. You could strafe and go around. Yeah. And, uh, I will ready the machete for a little bit of slashing time. Ready the machete. Ready the machete. For a 19. That hits. He said, we'll do the 1d8 plus 2 for 5 damage. Nice. You slice, and as you begin to slice, you feel this like, and Rusty, you had this too, but you're experienced with this. Um, <clears throat> when he, when this individual turned the bracelet and you felt the brink energy pouring out at all of you, when you slice with the machete, um, you almost feel like something come out of you and into the sword uh and it, it, it you didn't mean to do it but it cuts through some of the body armor and, and hits him Ooh. very nice uh is that your move that is my movement and my action all right lexi and robot oh no sorry yeah. it's the enemy's turn i beg your pardon oh. um okay. uh the uh brink user says uh, under a muffled voice, but beneath the like face mask thing goes, blade of my spirit. And uh, their brink energy condenses and forms a blue, like ethereal looking sword in their hand and they shh, clasp it. And they whip around and attempt to slash, I almost said Hadok, uh, Mamba. Mamba Roll does a, is that, that's always. That's always. And that's my fault. That is, it's it's here. It's in the, yeah, it's in the skills and feats. So. Epic. epic. From level one, baby. Epic. <laughs> Dang. Uh, well, I rolled a 20. So if oh. I can roll another 20, that would be nice. I didn't. <laughs> uh, does a Ooh, plus six to hit. That's nice. Uh, does a 16 hit you? Well, I mean, yeah, that, that would do it. Um, you take six damage, six wow. slashing damage. This blade does not feel good. It like burns no. almost. The brink energy you are now feeling does not feel nice. Uh, gamers, let's get some uh, combat emoticons in the chat. I don't know what you, what, what, what you would use for that, but you know, just use it. Um, and uh, then this person, because you know I had to do it to him. This person then whips around and throws the blade, which is, uh, what's attacking twice called, Bobby? The multi-attack, you mean? That feels good. Yay. That feels good. That feels good to hear. Um, uh, this person throws the sword at, we'll say, uh, Pauly. And Pauly does a, yeah, that hits you for sure, 15. <laughs> No. 15 doesn't hit? No, 16 is my armor class. Okay. Yeah, um, it's, mine is mine is 10 plus dex plus constitution. When I put I put mo my best stats into those two. 
Uh, yeah, these are these are the so these are you're seeing part of the uh, homebrew classes at work here. <laughs> Um, so the sword whips past you and sticks into a wall, and then they go like this and recall the sword as a bonus action. Um, and it, it evaporates in place and is in their hands again. And up next is Lexi. Uh, okay, she will send off Max. She'll be like, Max attack! Attacking. Yeah. It'll be like, it'll be like, um, max stealth attack. Let's see. Actually, stealth have attack? Stealth attack. I don't, I have not programmed that into him yet. Just max <laughs> attack. Uh, he unsheats the night stick and is like, <laughs> and goes in and whacks at his ankles. Yeah. Um, and roll, roll to hit. I don't know what I could do. Um, 15. That hits. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> uh, this um, five damage. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you feel through Maxwell this same feeling that uh, that uh, Mamba felt. Um, like the connection you have with Maxwell, you're like, and due to you know what your brink eventually will be. Um, you feel this sort of connection there, and you feel that same feeling of, like, it's weird. Like, the brink energy is, like, coming out of you. Uh-huh. Um, will you do anything? Me? Yeah. Oh, I can go as well. Yes. Mm. It's up to you whether or not you think she'd actually run up to this guy or not. Uh, she would not. So, uh, I want to call him back. And okay. Back. Uh... Okay, she will, or he will incur an attack of opportunity when he moves out of their space. Oh, um... I mean, he can only go up five feet back, so... So it's up to you, whether you want to or not. It's okay uh, either way. I mean... Not yet, I guess. Alright, so he'll chill there, right at the guy's I'll, feet. I'll just, I'll just be like, move out of the way, I don't know. <laughs> be Try careful. To, like, around his back or something. Sure. Um, so he like tries to like maneuver around. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, up next is Chance. Anyone else not gone yet? Me. Uh, you Polly's gone after yet? you. Okay. Polly's after um, you. I I guess I will uh, shakily take my meat cleaver in hand and. <laughs> run straight at this giant scary man with a magical sword and give him a give him a good old slash sure i would like to make a reaction okay and use something called helpful which allows me to use the help command as a reaction and um you get advantage on this attack roll oh nice so you roll two I, d20s and take the better i definitely need it okay <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Eh, where'd it go? Oh, good. Okay, well, so that would be... Bu- 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 16. Hits. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. This is cool. I like the help action. What What in your mind is happening in that moment? Is Rusty shouting words of support? Um, may, I don't know. Maybe, like, <laughs> some sort of distraction. Kick yeah, him in the back of up. the leg so that he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Excellent. Four. Nice. And then, as a bonus action, I'm going to inspire Meatball. Hmm. And I'm going to say, get him next! And what that does is that gives you an inspiration dice. A d6 that you can use in the next ten minutes. I like that. Uh, can I use it only on attack rolls or uh, on damage rolls? Uh, bu- 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 bu. Next I'm 10 minutes, sure you can roll the die, add the number, roll the d20. It's attack uh, rolls, I'm pretty sure. Attack rolls and saving throws, I think. But okay. before you know the, outcome, I know the let, outcome, let's treat it the same way as you would treat it last campaign with that one spell. I can't remember it. Yeah. Creature um, can wait until after it rolls the d20 before deciding to use the inspiration die, but must decide before the GM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. Hell yeah. Kind of like a bardic inspiration. Yeah, bardic inspiration, exactly. <clears throat> Patrick's class is uh, the uh, personality. All right. I'm feeling empowered. Thank you for whatever that just was, Chance. 
I'm gonna start sprinting at this guy. Is he near any walls? We're like in an alley? He's like in the middle of the alley. Okay. But the alley's only like 10 feet wide. All right, I'm gonna do like a, I'm gonna run at him and then do like a wall run for the next couple steps to like jump off and get him from above with a punch with the okay. brass knuckles. Yeah. Sick. That is uh, plus 18. Uh, that hits. Okay. And these are 1d4. You said I could I could attack twice with these things? Yes. Okay, I'll just do both. That second one's a natural 20. Hey! Nice. Okay, so... 4 plus 3 plus 3 is 10 damage. And then plus strength, 13. A quick 1, 2, 13 damage to the top of this guy's head. That's total from both? Yeah. Nice. You just... <laughs> and then do it like a wall pop. Kick off the wall and just... <laughs> fucking gnarly. Um, and he squats to the ground. Uh, and uh, Polly, are you going to stay within his space? Yes. Excellente. Uh, Rusty, it is your turn. He's on the ground now? Uh, he's on his ass. All right. Did I I'm feel just gonna... anything special through my... Yeah, you, uh, it should be noted. Also. All of you who had the, like, who hit felt the same thing that I explained to uh, <clears throat> to Maba. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to take this moment to just, like, run right up behind him and bite him. Hell yeah. <laughs> a little chomp. Go for it. Can I have him in the butt? Oh, that one. Oh, you go for the bite and you accidentally bite the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, ah! <laughs> it's, like, so physically painful. Uh, you take... One damage. All right. uh, it does not feel good. You're like, Arr! <laughs> yeah, do that thing. Was like, uh... oh wait, he's on his ass. Roll with advantage. Oh right. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, maybe not unless another hold one is up. rolled. Eleven. Uh, does not hit, but you don't. You I don't know, have. Yeah. You don't have the bad outcome. <laughs> no pain. Yeah, no pain. Uh, no pain, no gain, baby. Um. um yeah. What else? I guess with the rest of my movement, I'm just going to perch myself on Polly's shoulders. Okay. My turn there. Oh, that's smart, actually. Um, right on. Uh, after Rusty is Mamba. That's right. That's right. Let's see. So he's on his ass, and I have this machete. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a stab at it. What video game is that like? Otacon. He's on his ass. Snake! Snake! <laughs> I have a machete. Be quiet, let me do my roll. <laughs> Otacon, his yeah, teeth. Yeah, roll it, Mamba! Bite you his ass. Mamba! His attack Woo! advantage is so dummy thick. <laughs> 17. Uh, that hits. <clears throat> you could close it here, by the way. Let's go. Let's go. Was that the one? The A plus two is six. Do it. Yeah. How do you want to finish it? Are you killing this guy? This is up to you. If you're killing this guy or not. Damn. That, that, that. In front of a I don't kid. know what your alignment is. I don't know what your alignment. That was your well, choice. In front of a kid. That's. In front of a kid. That, that's just. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll knock him unconscious. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you bash him oh, with the the no. brunt of it. Uh, uh, and even if it were half damage, it still would have done it. Lexi's um, behind you. Kill him! Kill him! <laughs> <laughs> Mac was like, kill mode, kill mode, kill mode. <laughs> <laughs> he eats the night sick. <laughs> um, uh, oh, fuck yeah! Uh, no. Um, you, Jenny, knocks unconscious. And uh, well done. Your first oh, combat nice. encounter. We Complete. What a crack team! What a crack team! Uh, you all start to feel Brink energy flowing through you, and it feels like untapped well of potential. You feel good. You feel awesome. We we automatically understand that this is Brink. Yes. Energy okay. Um, and uh, Justin is nowhere to be seen. I... You all feel that too? 
Yeah, I'm concentrating. I'm trying to do something. Like I want to. Oh, yeah. I just want to make some magic happen. I'm just like straining. My face is beat red. Uh, nothing's happening. I punch the wall again. Just the brick wall. <laughs> it hurts way more this time. <laughs> I'm scurrying around looking for anything. Actually, no. I'm sorry. I'm desperately looking through the unconscious enemy's pockets and crevices, looking for anything that I can take. Uh, there is uh, an empty notebook um, and uh, an MTA card. This psychopath is, still has to have an MTA card. Got to get around. I um, put both in my pockets with much force, like good. hand like down to my elbow. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm jazzed. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm that's in the it. Middle, I'm in the middle of the alley. You gonna get down his hands up with something? Uh, there is some wire. He's got some tactical wire on him in one of his like utility pockets. And I missed it. Uh, you found it. Sorry, I'm just retconning this. this I, I, idea. Don't wanna, I don't want to just fucking. I'm looting through him, throwing shit away that I don't want over my shoulder, and the wire is there for you. Oh. I'll look at Mama and be like, "Could you help, maybe?" Mm. Oh, Hadok is back. Hadok yeah. is back, baby. The, the effort noises. Yeah. The ponder noise. Yes. Nice pose. Uh, I'm in the middle of the alley, like sniffing to see if I know where Justin's gonna. Uh, you can find his scent. Yeah, you could follow him. <laughs> uh, Mamba, you quickly bind his hands. Uh, and I guess just leave the guy. It, yeah. Uh, I'll still take a picture of him. Okay. Needs evidence. I say, okay, he's this way. Follow me. We'll come back for him. Uh, and you all take off running, following Rusty. And Rusty, you like weave them in and out of several alleyways. And then uh, you suddenly come to a halt and you all stop. You know, the doo -doo 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 sort of skid to a stop. And you just see the shadow of a figure with a bloody knife that has clearly stabbed Justin several times and is getting ready to go and just sees you and you can't make out any discernible features. Just this like tall, thin, lanky dude. And he quickly pockets the knife and jolts off. Wait, he I'm... stabbed Justin a few times? Yes. I'm going straight after him. No! And this is where we'll end episode one of Campaign 3 of Speedrunners and Dragons. Oh, no! <laughs> Doc yells. You hear it reverberating. <laughs> Planet's the ancestors are pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. That's episode one. Oh. We did it. Yay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yay. Um, call to action items. Please join the Speedrunners and Dragons Discord. Exclamation S ampersand D in the chat right now. Join that Discord and subscribe to that YouTube. Uh, this will go up on YouTube probably on Wednesday. Um, because Twitch partner contracts. Uh, you're technically supposed to wait over 24 hours. Um, also, uh, please follow our players. We'll do a little plug section as is customary in a second. Um, thank you everybody so much for watching and for all of the hype and excitement around the forthcoming campaign. I really appreciate it. Um, I have a lot of fun with these things. It's also an unbelievable amount of work. Uh, big thank you to Richard, our producer, who uh, did tech and made all the layouts for this. Uh, it's huge and an unbelievable help. Um, uh, for what it's worth, Speedrunners and Dragons is funded by viewers like you. Take it or leave it. Uh, but uh, we're excited to have you here. Um, and uh, our next episode will be in two weeks, but we'll confirm that that's possible for every all the players uh, after this. Um, let's do some plugs. Let's do some plugs. Thank you for the one bit, Patrick. Richard's salary is paid. Got it. Um, why don't we start with you, Dangers? What, uh, what, what do you got going on in the sure. Dangers sphere? Um, I speed on Mario games primarily. Been taking a little bit of a break from Twitch, but I'll be back soon. Um, and that's kind of the deal. Mario games go fast. Odyssey, um, Kirby came out recently. That game's super fun to speed run too. So kind of just variety Mario children's game speed runs. Sweet. That's, that's Wally. Me. Wally. Wally. Uh, I'm Danny. Uh, I'm the other half of the Nintendo speedrunning sphere from Rangers. I do that's Zelda. Right. He's the red man. I'm the green man. Uh, I've also been taking a little bit of a break from Twitch. Life's been super busy recently, but uh, I'm going to get back to it soon. So most importantly, follow these other people. And, and Danny, too. Don't 
Don't don't leave my Yeah. I don't know if I fly uh, in the right direction. Uh you would port point to your left, dangers. Um no, your left, like your actual left. There you go. <laughs> uh Foo. Hi, hey, I also do a little speed running. Well, speaking of all the persona music, I've been playing yeah. with her three. And desperately trying to finish up because I also want to do Xenoblade stuff. Um but yeah, I do a lot of like casual adventure games, platformers, RPGs. Um, but I also speedrun Kirby. I speedrun Kirby 64 nice. and I picked up Forgotten Land and it's fun. I'm just bad. But you know, we're working <laughs> on it. Um, and I'm about to go to Disney World. So I took I took my little break like last month and I'm taking a few days off this coming week. But um yeah, so you can always check out my Disney progress on not Twitch, because I don't stream when I'm at Disney World, but I What's your Instagram? What's your yeah, Instagram, Instagram handle? TikTok. If you want to find me anywhere else, if you just search Kung Fu Fruit Cup, that, those are my accounts. So, Tweet. Here you can find. I love how we're doing like, hey guys, what, call to action, where do we find you? Nowhere, we're n none of us are streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm streaming well. I know <laughs> the rest of the week. Besides. I know I know two people who are streaming and they stream all the time. Bobby, why don't you go first? Yeah. <laughs> I do stream all the time. This is my full time job. And uh, yeah, my name is Bobby. I play a lot of Mega Man in Castlevania, but I also stream a lot of charity and produce a whole bunch of esports uh, tournament events on my channel. If you like a whole bunch of that variety, make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash the blacktastic or on Twitter, because we'll be definitely be musing about a whole bunch of speculation here in these next couple episodes of Speedrunners and Dragons Season 3. Patrick, what a plug. Patrick. Patty. I also stream full-time. I'll be streaming later tonight. Uh, recently, I've been taking care of some gnarly tennis elbow I've got from playing video games too much, because I play so many video games on stream. So... I, for example, will be spending the night watching uh, Mahler's response to H-Bomber Guy's Dark Souls 2 defense video. So if you want to watch a British man pick apart an hour-long video over the course of nine hours, then, oh. <laughs> then, then uh, stop on by. And once my, uh, once my arms are better, I will be back to playing all kinds of video games. Dark Souls, for instance. I play a lot Sweet. of Mario 64 ROM hacks and stuff like that. So stop on by and have some fun. Sick. Um, <clears throat> follow our excellent players, please. Uh, as far as what is on this channel, um, big news this week is uh, Saturday is going to be um, I'm doing I'm trying something I never tried before. And we're going to do a big old honky stream on Saturday uh, to raise funds for a few things in the life of ADEF. Uh, so the ADEFathon is on Saturday. Uh, it's sort of like a subathon, except instead of letting Bezos take any money, it's just all going to go to me, um, uh, which is the, the GOAT way. Um, <laughs> uh, except no one gets emotes. Um, so yeah, stop on by on Saturday. I'm probably literally going to be streaming all day, potentially 24 hours, depending on how it goes. Um, uh, potentially two days, depending on how it goes. Uh, so stop on by on Saturday on my stream. I'll be live all day. Uh, and with that, gamers, thank you so much for watching Speedrunners and Dragons episode uh, one of campaign three. Uh, Richard and I have been working very hard. So thank you for uh, your eyes and your ears and your hearts. Um, and they're, uh, they're so good, dude. Um, we're going to cut to just like uh, some kind of Speedrunners and Dragons logo screen of some kind, and we're going to find a raid target. Uh, and, uh, bye-bye, and thank you so much. Stick around, or we're gonna raid someone. <laughs>